yes, mazes. Diamond Tier 1 is the highest rank on Master Duel's competitive ladder. And with the right deck and a bit of luck, just about anyone can achieve that goal. That book landed on my foot. But what if you don't use the right deck? What if you're a bit liberal with how you define competitive? How far could you get? I'm Hardleg Joe, if in you didn't know, and that's exactly what I do. Each month, my patrons pick a different archetype, and I see how far I can push it up the Master Duel ladder. This month's deck is Libromancer, an archetype of geeks and goobers with the ability to ritual summon heroes straight out of their Japanese animes. Or I guess it's mangas in this case. Like the nerds they're based on, Libromancers are kind of awkward, and they've never been the most popular. Their abilities are often misunderstood, and their strengths underestimated. But at their core beats the fiery heart of a champion, one that will never give up as long as there's still hope. Will that shonen optimism be enough to reach Diamond 1? Do these geeky bookworms have what it takes to dunk on the popular kids? Will the friendship between these two blossom into a full-blown Libromance? You'll have to watch to find out. Alright, so as the intro said, we are playing Libromancer. And we've got a list right here, which is probably the most expensive list I've played to date. This is just... this is We've we finally done it, chat. A, a whole deck of nothing but URs and SRs. I think we've got two rares. Two rares and everything else is valuable, so this is going to be an expensive deck. And this is actually not even the first deck we're going to start with. This is something I'm calling Biblomancer because it mixes the Libromancer with Dogmatica. But like usual, I think it'll be fun to start out with a more pure variant of the deck first, see what they can do on their own. So I've got this other version, which is slightly cheaper, that I'm calling Libero TK which is based around using this guy, Libromancer Fireburst, to just try to, to, to kill the hell out of the opponent. This thing can do two attacks on monsters and does double battle damage. With 2800 and the ability to gain more attack plus some other stuff, we just might have what it takes to completely decimate our opponent. Especially when we're playing stuff like Gamasil, Dino Wrestler Pankratops. We're going to try to get three of these because it's going to be at three once the, the season actually starts. Like six days from now we're getting it. Uh, we've also got like Lightning Storm. So we're going to start with this Go Second variant. And then if that doesn't take us all the way into Diamond, then we're going to switch to this uh, Biblomancer deck. And there are some other tech cards, some other ideas, but we've got to open these packs first and see how much we have after this before we try to figure out what else we can add into this. <laughs> so we're gonna open some packs and then once I've got the deck built, then I'll explain how it works. All right, so fortunately, since the Libromancers are new, they all still come in a normal pack, which is pretty nice because these are smaller than the, the secret packs. We have less chance of pulling something outside of them. They also contain some stuff like the Therions, which we might play in the future, so those will be useful. As well as the Heroic Champions, which I'm pretty much just not going to play. I, I don't think I'm ever going to play them, so we can break down all those and get some more Super and Ultra points as we need. No idea if we're going to be able to... I have 9,000 points to spend before I have to spend some money. And my chat is actually voting on whether or not I'll be able to pull everything I need without having to spend money. Uh, so far, it looks like two to one that I will, but I guess there's only one way to find out. Oh! The pride flows through it. Let the power of the LGBTQ grant me the geek boy that I need. Oh! Well, I got the other trap. We might end up playing that. What's this do? Hey, Disco Coliseum. And what are you? Hey, fire. We needed a fire. This is one of the key cards in there. So we've got one of our ultra rares. Just, just nine more. <laughs> All right, will this be fire number two? No, but it's the Libromancer Fire Burst, which is like that, but with fundamental differences. And we did need one of those, so there we go. Hey, it's a Magigirl. I think I already have her. And an Azura King. This is pretty nice. It takes three level threes, but it's a generic effect negator. 
So we'll probably keep one of them, and we got two of them, so we could break we could break at least one of those down. We've got we've got quite a few things worth breaking down, and we've got at least two ultra rares. That's if we could just get one ultra rare for, pa for per pack, I think we'll we'll probably have enough. Maybe. <laughs> Ooh, double purples. All right. If we can get a fire and a field spell, that'll be one hell of a pull. Oh, we got Regulus. Having more Regulus isn't bad. What's this one? And the Disco Coliseum. Okay. So the unfortunate thing is that we didn't need this, but now we have three of it. So any more we get after this, we can just absolutely break down. All right. We need that Libromancer field spell. Show me the Libromancer field spell. Ha! Well, that's not the field spell, but it is a Libromancer we need. We got ourselves the Doom Broker. Mr. Beast! So we got, again, you know, we got one good UR and maybe some we can break down. We're doing pretty decently. Let's go ahead and open our third pack to see what we got. Will we really not get a single ultra rare in this pack? Will we lose all the, uh, yep. Well, this is a bust, although at least, you know, the next one we get, the guaranteed ultra rare. So maybe we'll get, we'll get multiples in this one, you know? That's, that's the hope. Wow, this is the, the worst one yet. We started off strong and now we're doing awful. Wow, one ultra rare. Is it at least gonna be one that I need? Is it gonna be the Libromancer field spell or fire? Come on, you owe me after two horrible packs. Nope, it's the Therion boss monster. All right, well, things are continuing to not look great, but uh, you know, we're, we've used half of our gems. This one's, this one's looking better. We got a couple, a couple ultra rares in there. Maybe we'll get something good. Hey, there's a geek boy. We've been wanting one of those. I guess bringing out Critter did bring good luck. Thanks, Critter. Well, we've got, we got one geek boy we needed, but things really not looking up. We, <laughs> we haven't even gotten all the, uh, the Libromancers we need yet, and we're already going on to 6,000 packs, or 6,000 gems. Not, not great. All right, here's my one shot at a UR. Will it be the UR I need? Well, we got a whole bunch of supers first. Can we get our third geek boy? Are you geek boy? No. How about you? Are you Geek Boy? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay, so we got at least one card we need. What are you then? Another we don't need. Okay, can we get the field spell? The field spell or maybe the third fire? Either one would be great. No, it's another goddamn theory on a regular. <laughs> oh, wow, we have eight of these. At least, you know, we're at four of these, so we could break those down. And 15 Slayers. <laughs> oh, that was actually our fourth Geek Boy. Okay, so we don't even need the Geek Boy. We could just break down a lot of these. Okay, you know what? We're gonna take a short break. I'm gonna I'm gonna go break some stuff down and see if we can... We still need to open this pack. All right, I've got 3,000 left. I don't wanna spend all of them on this one pack. I've still gotta open stuff with the fairies and everything too. Okay, so we're looking fairly good. We still need some URs from that pack. We'll probably go back and open it up because if we can get just one more of these, uh, the field spell or the third fire, we'll be set. But I also want to try to get some of these diviners because we're going to need this no matter what version of we play. And pretty much any ritual deck in the future is going to need this too. Fortunately, we already have access to this. I forget what we crafted to have this, but we've, we've got to it. And this also has Seravius, which might be something we end up playing in the future, actually. This is a pretty good tech card in here. And everything else we could probably break down. I am never going to play a Demise deck, no matter what. We also need Heralds of the Arc Light, so that'll be worth it. And I'm probably never gonna play ultimateness, so I'll just break that down as well. So let's go ahead, we'll open some packs of this. Who knows, maybe we'll get something neat out of the secret packs. We gotta hope for some divine holy luck here. All right, we've got a purple pack. We've got a pride pack right in the very first set. Will it be that, no, it's in the wrong side of the pack. No, we're getting all our stuff from the, the non-secret part of the pack. Vylon Omega. Well, I can break that down. I am never playing Vylon. Sorry, Vylon fans out there. Uh, this I might play, though. That's that's a decent pickup. Well, that was disappointing. 
We got another lib for all our libs. We could put them all together, but uh, other than that, disappointing. But we'll give it another shot. Another shot, another opportunity. Uh, libro spaghetti, perhaps? Oh, this doesn't even have an ultra rare in it. <laughs> Hey, there's a diviner of the heralds. She was hiding, sneaking, running about. Okay, so at least we've got one. We didn't think there would be, who knows? Maybe we'll get a second one in this this last pack. There, there was a hidden ultra rare. Okay, you're not it. Come on, second diviner. Can I get two? Two out of two? You're, you're not, you're not her. I guess I could break you down though. So there's at least there's at least that. Um, we've got 1,000 more. Uh, we still haven't gotten an arc light either. So yeah, we're gonna spend the last thousand on here, which means it's very unlikely, unless this is like all purples. Wow, this is a lot of purples. All right, we may get lucky, let's, let's see. But we're probably gonna have to spend some money. These packs of mine glow with an awesome power. They tell me to seize Diviner of the Heralds. Show me the Diviner! Hell yeah! My hands truly gloweth! All right, this pack of mine glows with an awesome power. It also tells you to give me the third Herald. <laughs> Well, I didn't specify which Herald, so, you know, I guess that's fine. We didn't get a Shen Shen, though. I forget if I already have one of those, but if not, if not, we've got one. It's a kind of a staple. And if we do already have one, you only need one so I can break that down. All right. Oh, it's not even in the right side of the pack. Well, maybe we'll get supremely lucky and this'll, this'll be the, uh, the Diviner anyway. No. No, it's Arcana Force 21 The World. The most, the weirdest car ever printed. All right, I'll have to look at stuff. I'll have to see what I can break down. We might just have enough. All right, so after sitting down, breaking down everything that I can part with and seeing what else we need from both versions of the deck, we still need about 10 ultra rares and I've only got enough points to craft maybe three of them. So that means it's time once again to wail on gems, which is not something I would recommend you doing. Do not live the life that I do where you build a competitive deck every single month because it is very expensive and it's not worth it. $80 for 5,000 gems. It's only worth it because I'm doing it for content because I will make back some of this money, hopefully in, in making these videos that entertain y'all. And I'll take this moment once again to remind you that if you like this content and you want to help support me so that I can afford to continue doing stuff like this, there is a Patreon link down in the description, patreon.com slash hardleggaming. Put that on the screen so everyone can see it. Just $1 a month really helps. That's worth more than like a hundred ads. Oh, well thank you Slash. I appreciate the $10 donation. But yeah, just $1 really helps and it gets you on my patrons only Discord where you can get like updates about streams, find out about what's going on before it actually hits the channel. $2, you get weekly Patreon updates. You could really find out what I've got planned. $5, you get the episodes a day early if you wanna watch these before they come out on Patreon without any ads, there's that. And of course for $10, you get to become an influencer of influencers, which is the role on the Discord that helps me pick what deck I climb with every month. You get to suggest a deck and then talk it over and then everyone votes on what gets chosen. So if any of that sounds good to you and you wanna help me in the process, please consider checking that out. Any amount will help. For now though, I'm just gonna have to go in. I'm just gonna have to, to add and you know what, I'm, I'm on Steam and I'm like, I'm just gonna add $100 to my Steam wallet because I have a feeling this is not going to be enough. <laughs> All right, we've got 5,000 more gems. We're gonna go back to the Libromancer pack, see what we can do with this. Hopefully it'll be enough. I'm not gonna come back and show every single pack from this point onwards. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go through it and I'll come back if something interesting happens. This is the 10,000th gem. Hey, there's the Libromancer field spell, finally. 
It only took us, oh, this should say 11,000. Yeah, we're on 11,000, but we finally got another one of the field spell. Okay, if we can get one more or one more fire, then I'll, I'll be willing to, to, to craft the other ones. But we need to get as many out of this as we can. So we're going in with the 12th one. Let's see if we can get some better luck here. Hey, Eden, all that glitters is gold. Only shooting stars break the mold. Show me the Libromancers with the power of All-Star coming in to, to get me absolutely <coughs> not a single one. Wow. Three URs and not a single one I need. Okay, Smash Mouth, you failed me for the last time. Never again. Never again. <laughs> uh, well, we need to generate a Pankratops, right? One free pull, chat. You think I'll get the Pankratops out of the one free pull? It doesn't seem likely, but there's always a chance. There's always a chance we open this one and we just get the other Pankratops. I mean, it looks like it could be shiny. There's an Ultra Rare in here. Come on, Pankratops. I've got to believe in the power of Pankratops. Summon to me, oh, Pank and Spank. Ooh, ah. You're not a Pankratops. That would have been so cool. I'm not playing Dino. Get that shit out of my face. Fuck that guy. All right, so it took all our gems, all 14,000 of them, and I had to go back and break down some URs that I was hoping to hold on to, but we had just enough to make the whole deck, pretty much. Um, we still got a little bit left, but that's because I didn't craft the third Entis. I put in a Excess Code Talker instead. Not sure if we'll necessarily need all three, but we are playing Pot of Extravagance, which is why I ended up crafting, like, Two Phoenix, two Cerberus. We have more than enough super rare points. It's just those ultra rare points that are proving to be difficult. So as always, I'm gonna test this out against some patrons, see if this works out, see if this is good enough. Uh, and then I'll come back with a possibly modified list and explain how Libromancers work before we actually get to the ladder climb. All right, so after a bit of testing and a day of rest, this is what we're going in with, Libro TK Mark I. And as I said before, this is not the best version of the deck. This is just the most pure version of the deck. It's actually kind of hard to play entirely pure Libromancers because their, uh, their archetype is kind of small. They almost have to be mixed with something. Uh, and in this case, we're basically just mixing them with a bunch of Go Second Staples and a whole bunch of Hand Traps. Uh, most of the hand traps we put in there for like cross out designator because we can get disrupted fairly easily This is a nice way to stop all of that, but we've also got like Gamasil, we've got Dino Wrestler Pankratops, Max C and Ash of course, and then the one Effect Veiler, the one um, Infinite Impermanence, two Called by the Grave, and one Nibiru. So if we do the Max C challenge, we actually can draw into something this time, which is kind of been a problem with previous episodes. As for the archetype itself, I think the easiest way to explain it is that it's it's Invoked Mark II. If you're familiar with Invoked, that was an engine where you normal summoned Alistair, and through a roundabout series of ways, it got you to a an Omni Negate, and then the ability to do it again next turn. And that's essentially what this does. It just does it using rituals, and they also have a ritual which helps you OTK. Um, I'll go over those after that, but the very, very basic setup is most of the Libromancer main deck monsters, the non-rituals, say, you can reveal one ritual in your hand, special summon this card from your hand. If it's special summoned, do a thing. In this case, it adds a Libromancer spell from your deck to your hand. This adds a Libromancer monster. Our one Libromancer spell is the field spell which does a couple things, but mainly, when it's activated, you add a Libromancer monster from your deck to your hand. So basically the three of these form a, a, a sort of cycle. No matter which one of these you draw, it gets the other ones. So the field spell will get you fire, fire searches any monster, so you get Geek Boy, and Geek Boy searches the field spell. <laughs> it makes this loop. Obviously if you open with any one of these, then you're gonna use the other one to get a uh, ritual monster, and that's what you reveal to summon the rest of them. We can also get a ritual monster using Diviner of the Heralds. This is the normal summon in the deck. We're gonna normal summon this, 
We're going to send Herald of the Arclight to the graveyard, and this searches a ritual monster when it's sent to the graveyard. It also searches a ritual spell, which we don't have any of, because the field spell is the ritual spell. The field cell says you can ritual summon during the main phase. It is not once per turn. So as long as you have the materials, you can just keep ritual summoning over and over again. Uh, usually you're only going to do it once or twice, but it, it's nice that they have that. And of course, if it survives until next turn, you could just use it again. As for what we're actually ritual summoning, the main one, the one that we're gonna use in every version of the build is Libromancer Doombroker. So if this card is ritual summoned using monsters on the field, it can attack directly, which is kind of nice because its other effect is when this card inflicts battle damage, target a monster your opponent controls, shuffle it into the deck, which is a great way to get rid of something like a uh, Mirror Jade because shuffling it into the extra deck doesn't trigger its like floating effect. Most floating effects don't trigger when they're shuffled into the deck. And if you use a monster on the field, this can attack directly, so you can always activate this. Sucks that it targets, but still pretty decent. Its most important effect, though, is during the main phase, set a Libromancer trap directly from your deck. The main trap we have is Libromancer Intervention. When your opponent activates a card or effect, target a Libromancer Ritual Monster, return it to the hand, negate that effect, then special summon a Libro from your hand or graveyard. So basically, we're gonna summon Doombroker, add the trap, the trap negates anything by returning this to the hand, and then it summons back a Geek Boy or a Fire from the graveyard, and these, of course, get the search going so that we can do the whole cycle again. Uh, the one Libromancer main deck I didn't talk about, Agent, he has an effect that once per turn, you can target a Libromancer card in your graveyard, except itself, add it to your hand. If you added a spell trap, you have to put it a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck, which seems like a downside, except most of the time what you're doing is adding the trap back and then putting it on bottom of the deck and then immediately searching it with Doombroker again. <laughs> So it doesn't, it doesn't resolve anything. Now the problem, of course, the reason why this isn't quite as good as the Invoked Engine is because we can only do it twice. We can basically use the trap once and then we can summon Agent and we can recycle it again. Uh, th we might end up putting more traps or more Agents in here. Um, they do have another trap that lets you bounce a Libromancer to permanently steal a monster. We might end up putting that in as well. But for the time being, since we're on the OTK Go Second build, I don't want to load this down with a whole bunch of traps. We're just playing the one. As for the OTK, that, that has to do with the other two Libromancers we got here. Mostly Fire Burst. If this card is ritual summoned using monsters on the field, it cannot be destroyed by battle, and any battle damage it inflicts is doubled. And then just by default, it's a 2800 that can attack twice on monsters during each battle phase, and when a monster declares an attack, you can banish a ritual from the graveyard and it gains 200. So a 3000 double attacker that does double piercing. And this works really well with our third ritual, Mystigirl. If this card is summoned using a monster on the field, your opponent can't target rituals with monster effects, which is mildly okay. More importantly, if this is special summoned, so either ritual or otherwise, target a monster your opponent controls until the end of the turn, its attack is zero and negate its effects. So because of the field spell, we can easily ritual summon this, make something zero, and then attack into it with a 3,000 double battle damage attacker. This is also good as disruption if we happen to go first and we get this combo, because if you summon this properly and then use it as material for like Doombroker, search the trap, you can bounce Doombroker back to negate something, summon the Mystigirl, and because their effect works on special summon, then you get to target a monster, negate its effects, make it attack zero. So we, we have a little bit of a, a thing going on here. It's it's pretty neat. I'm not sure if it'll be as powerful. The, the main benefit of running an engine like this is it's so small and so consistent that we can afford to run 14 hand traps and pancratops and gamma seal and pot of extravagance and emergency teleport, which summons the geek boy from the deck. We can also make some synchros using this. It's a tuner. We've got some other stuff in here, but you'll see that as we go. That's the main strategy. And I am unsure if this will be able to get us out of Platinum. I'm highly doubtful, but I want to at least try this version before we go to the Dogmatica one, because that's probably what we're going to end up spending most of our time on. But anyway, enough explanations. Let's go ahead. Let's take this deck onto the ladder and show them how many Liberos it takes to screw in a light bulb. 
All right, so we're actually going to go first with this deck. At least I'm gonna try that at first. Even though it's an OTK deck, because we're not very good at, at breaking through boards. It's actually easier and more efficient for us to uh, set up a disruption and then like slow them down, maybe make it so they only get one monster on board and OTK them from that position than it is to let them set up and try to OTK from that position. So let's go ahead, let's start with the uh, emergency teleport. See if that can get Geek Boy. I don't think they had Ash, but there's always a chance they have Ash, you know. We use the effect. We search the field spell, which we already have, but that's that's fine. That's just how it's got to be. We activate this. Let's go ahead and add fire from our deck to our hand. <laughs> fire, fire. Yeah, we're activating the fire. We're going to reveal the fire starter. We're going to special summon this. And this is going to get the Doom Broker. Unfortunately, we didn't start with another monster. We don't really have the ability to to uh, ritual summon this using anything our, in our hand. Because oftentimes you can use these to make like a link and then get Doom Broker on the field. Um, I can normal summon actually. Do we want to give up our Veiler? Four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't have a level eight synchro. Maybe I should. Maybe we should put one of those in there. No, it's fine. We're just going to have to, we're just going to have to make do with Doom Broker. Doom Broker, Maxi, Veiler should be enough. So let's summon the Doom Broker using the cards on the field. We'll just put him in defense mode. Wakasha. And then we'll use his effect to search the trap. All right. And again, this may not seem like a very powerful go first board because it isn't. The idea isn't to shut people down. This isn't like a combo deck. The idea is we have enough disruption to slow them down and then we can one punch them next turn, hopefully. There's always a chance they like kaiju this and then I'm just like dead. Add one runic card from your deck to your hand. Uh, that's fine. It's runic, of course it's runic. Also, I just realized we don't have any music. So we're going to intervention the fountain. The one thing I've learned about runic, gotta keep them off the fountain. I thought this was a counter trap. It's not though, it's just a regular trap. It'd be nice if it was a counter trap. All right, so that comes back. You're destroyed. Summon a monster. Uh, yeah, we wanna go for fire. 1800 defense. And then because fire was... Oh, this negates and doesn't destroy, son of a bitch. I completely forgot about that. Normally when you negate a spell, that doesn't matter, but I guess we learned, you know. We're starting off. Special summon a runic. This is a good time to max C. We'll get at least one monster out of it. Well, that's nice. That'll make it easier to OTK. At least we can Veiler them to stop them from getting the continuous trap. Called by? Okay. Well, we got rid of the called by. Oof. Floodgates, my favorite. Interesting. I wonder why they're using all of this now. They've already used the runic fountain effect. Well, there's all three of our heralds. All right, so we have a chance. It's not much of a chance, but we have one. Okay, so we're gonna start, we're gonna Gamasil their monster. Uh, to attack position, uh, activate the agent. We're gonna reveal the Doom Broker. Special summon. Let's go ahead and use this and get our trap back. Hopefully we won't need it, but let's let's do it anyway. And then we've got to hope they don't have the spell trap removal one in their hand. It doesn't seem like they do. Okay, we get Geek Boy. We activate the Geek Boy. We're going to reveal this. Target one monster. It's not destroyed. That does not help you the way you think it does. Although they can recycle now. And if they banished Magic Girl, I'm gonna be in trouble. They really can't banish Magic Girl before I get a chance. How come this didn't activate? Oh, it's spells. Okay, I am I got confused. I thought this searched a monster. So let's do this then. So we're gonna activate the first appearance. 
Let's ritual summon the Doom Broker. Uh, oh yeah, we just gotta use Agent. Oh, and I banished, they banished the trap so I can't search. So we can attack directly with this. And then in the damage step, we can shuffle this back into my deck. Then we can attack this and do double damage. But that's not quite it. <laughs> we were so close, chat. We almost had victory, and yet the jaws of defeat were mighty. Yeah, if they have li if they have any way to get rid of this, we're dead. And if they don't, then we can attack directly. Oh, oh. Wait! They played it in the imperm column. <laughs> we can negate it. <laughs> <laughs> no demise for you, Runic! This can attack directly. If they don't have a way to negate its effects or destroy it, then we win. Then we just win. Attack directly? Yes! We pulled victory from the jaws of defeat! Uh... <laughs> well... That's, that, that's like the worst, the whole time I'm sitting there, like, we can't show this duel. I've messed up significantly. I misplayed so bad. But we still won. We still won due to incompetence and playing into the imperm column. Let that be a lesson to you, chat, kids. N never play into the imperm column. All right, we've got a, a decent hand. This is not too bad. Let's go ahead and use the e telly first, and that way maybe if they have an Ash, this will bait that out. That's the hope, because we need this to resolve and get us a uh, ritual spell, or ritual monster, if we're gonna be able to do everything else. If nothing else, we could try again next turn, because now we have two of them things. So let's go ahead and activate this. Let's get the Doom Broker. Now that we've got the Doom Broker, we can activate this effect. Go ahead and s reveal the Doom Broker. Special Summon. Activate this effect. We're just going to get another Geek Boy. And now we can set up so we have slightly more, we have slightly more things. The neat thing about these is they Special Summon and there's literally no dis restriction on what you can use them for. So we can use these to go into like IP Mask Arena and then we can Ritual Summon. And so now when we bring back the fire to get the search, we can also then have an opportunity to go into Nightmare Unicorn and do something from there. So this represents two disruptions. Plus a maxi. Plus setup for next turn. All right, your move, Soup Bowl. Let's see what they're cooking up. Wondering who is who. Ow. Let's go ahead and use an intervention. Gotta negate to save my field. And I'm gonna lose this anyway, and we actually need this in our hand if we're going to do stuff. Max C. Unfortunate, but you know, understandable. They're going to draw potentially two off of this, but I've got the Max C as well. Uh, special summon to the field. Yeah, we've gotta go for the fire. Hello, it's me. Give me that search. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the agent so that we can recycle our things. Upstart Goblin. Sky Strikers? I think it's Sky Strikers. I'm gonna activate this now. That way if they wanna do Ray, they, they're gonna get it. And if they don't wanna do Ray, you know, hopefully this will motivate them uh, to pass. I believe I can OTK from here, assuming they don't have other, other stuff. Uh, end of the main phase, battle phase. Main phase two? All right, that was... <laughs> I was expecting the, the evenly matched jump scare, but it didn't come. They just like to, they like to threaten it, you know? They're just not having a good time, chat. I'm guessing they're stuck on, on hand traps, but if they had all those hand traps, why wouldn't they have used them, I'm, I'm wondering. Uh, okay, we're gonna use the agent. We're gonna reveal this. Special summon. Let's go ahead and use this and get the uh, the trap back into the deck. Then we're gonna use the field spell. Field spell grabs fire burst. 
to attack. Uh, we don't do double battle damage if we use Gamma Sill. We'd have to use both on field. That's about 6,007. It's almost, it's almost, well, we don't have to use entirely from the field as long as you use one monster on the field. So we can summon Fire Burst using Fire and one second. Doom Broker can use Gamma Sill. Okay. Yeah, I guess we have to use both of these. Damn Pebble Rule. So we can get Fire Burst, then we can Ritual Summon again, Doom Broker using the Gamma Seal. Hello there. Um, we can activate the effect just in case, set this back to the field, and then we go in. And they're like, oh, okay, we're fine, you know. 25, 800, I have more than 28 left. This isn't quite game, this isn't why they do 56. That's not what that number said. That's the hit for a much higher number. But there you go, chat. That's the fabled Libero TK. All the damage, one turn. And all they had to do was pass without doing anything. I wonder if uh, you're taking bets. Let's see if it's actually Sky Striker. This is not where I look at things. What's the act of Sky Striker? Is it Striker? <laughs> Well, I wasn't expecting that. Super Quantums. I, I haven't seen Super Quantum in a dog's age. Upstart Goblin, I guess that's fine in Super Quant, because if you make this, you just kind of win. But yeah, I guess I could see why they didn't want to play into Max C, because I would have drawn every card. Every last card. All right. Um, let's go ahead and use Effect Veiler. We drew, like, all the hand traps. This does- this is still full combo. We've got a ritual and a way to get to Geek Boy, unless they have Ash. Okay, so this will either draw us two cards, or if they do have the Ash, then maybe they'll use it here. No. Okay, and we've got the Imperm still to take care of the, um, the whatchamacallit. Oh, and the Pank? Thank you. Oh no. They've resolved that grass, chat. Oh, and there's a bone tower, soul absorbing bone tower and Hei Jun. Oh, and they hit every single Mizuki. What a nightmare. What if I said to the nay? Now at this point, it's pretty much getting to Nibiru. They could probably synchro this off and bring this back and start things again. Just summon another one. I just need to get to Nibiru before they can mill it. <laughs> no, my ritual! Timing out is possible. My ritual spell! Yeah, every time they special summon, I draw one and they mill two, so statistically... It's more likely that they're going to mill it than not. I have to be exceptionally lucky at this point. All right, I haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> we did it! Oh, we've got to wait for the, the the graceful to come back first. It's gonna cost us too many two more mills, but Nobiru, let's find a rock. I mean, a big ass rock. Maybe something like a cinder block is better. Unfortunately, if they don't surrender here, I don't think I can win. I don't think I have the ability to get on enough damage to actually kill him. Oh, they're just gonna, they're just gonna do it through, they're gonna, they're gonna max see me to death. The Nibiru came too, well, even if it came earlier. Well, great, I found the one deck where Maxi is bad, all right, chat? <laughs> As I said during the zombie deck, if you activate grass, you just win. FTK'd, chat. FTK'd by my own Maxi. A sad state of affairs, but you can't really plan for stuff like that. All right, so as you might be able to tell by the fact that we're already up to 10 duels, but I've only showed a couple of them, we've not been doing all that well, mostly because of Runic. A little bit of Branded too, but we've been running into a lot of Runic. It's the first day of climbing the ladder, and a lot of people are using that on easy mode. And after going through a lot of potential techs, 
I have decided to do something crazy. I have taken out the Gamma Seals, and I have put in Spell Canceller. If you don't know, this is basically Jinzo, but for spells. While it's on the field, spells are negated, your opponent can't activate, neither one can activate spells. Usually a difficult prospect because it's level 5, you have to tribute a monster, but we have almost no normal summons in this deck. Like if we have Diviner, we're, we're already off to the races, but if we get any of these, we can tribute them off the field, summon Spell Canceller, Going first, that completely shuts down our opponent. It prevents us from ritual summoning, but we can always link this off if we get anything else, or just win the game off the back of that if we're playing against Runic. Hopefully, they'll still have their floodgates, so there might still be some stuff we can do. But, uh, I want to try something drastic, and it's either this or, like, Invader of Darkness, and I'm not buying that. <laughs> That's... That's too expensive for too much. There's also things like Seravius with might help, but it's a fucking ultra rare. Denko Seca, maybe. I think Denko might be what we try next. If we're gonna go for a go second deck, but um, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm driven a little insane by all the floodgates in this deck and the fact that Runic is allowed to exist at full power. So we're trying Spell Canceler. Let's see how it works. All right, so all I'm gonna play through is Baller Drock. That sucks. We'll baller drop and whatever they have set. But it's not like impossible. All right, let's activate Extrav. Let's extract value from the deck. Well, that would have been nice. Let's try this. We'll activate. We'll add a monster from deck to hand. We need to get fire. Let's activate this. It's not a zombie. We'll reveal Magic Girl. It's the Magical Mystical Tour. Activate. Now it's a zombie. You want to negate or banish? I hope they negate. That would be the better of the two, although I think I'm screwed either way. Except during the damage step. So unless they have a face, unless they have like an imperm face down, I might be able to do this. Yeah, we're going to use first appearance. We're going to summon Doom Broker using this and this. We're going to summon the Doom Broker. And because we use a monster on the field, we can attack directly. And then in the damage step, we can shuffle this back into the deck. And now we search the trap. And it's times like these. I wish we, we had the other trap. Maybe I should put that in here. We might be doomed, but at least we got rid of the baller rock, and we've got stuff for their graveyard shenanigans. So we're in a decent place. Uh, yeah, I think we need to do this now, right? That not only keeps them off the baller rock, but it ensures that we can summon this again next time, because otherwise it's going to die and we're going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, use your negate. Let's try this. We need to get fire, right? Negate that effect. Okay, so they can't negate this then. They can banish it, which locks me out of synchros. Hmm. Trying to think, trying to think, trying to think, think, think. We'd have to Magic Girl and then Fire Burst, and we don't have a way to do that. Oh, wait, yeah, we do. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we send the Arc Light. We get Fire Burst. We activate Agent. Reveal, doesn't matter, Fire Burst or whatever. Special Summon. Activate this effect. Get back the Magic Girl. Then we can Ritual Summon the Magic Girl by using this on the field. The Magic Girl effect turns you to zero. We can summon Fire Burst and they can't target rituals because Magic Girl's on the field. So we can use Agent and Doom Broker. Summon this guy. He's big, big, big. And now because they have zero and we deal double battle damage, we can just attack into this. 
Use the optional effect, because I'm not afraid to die. 3,000. Don't tell me they have mirror force. <laughs> Victory from the jaws of defeat! We did it! <laughs> uh, okay. e -telly. This has to resolve, and it will, because we could do that with Ash. He was a geeky boy. She said, you're a squeaky boy. You aren't good enough for me. Now he's a superstar, doing a superstar. He wasn't good enough for me. Um, let's see. So we've already opened the thing. We don't need Doom Broker to search it, which means we can get Magic Girl, who is less um, investment and has more defense. Special summon. Let's get Doom Broker for next turn. No, let's get this. All right, chat. And then what we do is we activate this. We special summon the Magic Girl in defense position using the, uh, the fire on the field. I'm magic. Uh, normal summon. Yo, what up? How's it going? Nice to meet you. I hope your deck does not use spells because they are canceled. They're ju just like the Liberos chat to bring in cancel culture. Just because of a few bad tweets, all the spells have been canceled. Their jobs are over. They can't get an interview. Please let it be runic or branded. Please don't let this be lap. Well, the spells are here to stay, chat. The oh, come on! Denko? You're gonna hit me with the Denko now! And the King of the Mystical Beasts! I thought I was prepared to go second, but I was not. They they have everything. They were just uh, too powerful, chat. The unfortunate thing about this is that as long as that Denko's there, I'll never get the ritual back to my hand, which means I can't do the other things. That's, that's fine. I didn't, I didn't want it. Okay. You had, you had a pretty, I, I don't know what happened there, chat. That was the most baffling and strange game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I've played in a long time. This was not rank 8 turbo, or was it? No, it is rank 8 turbo. I guess they didn't have another 8. Alright, so here we are, stream number two, which you'll notice is actually like day four overall. The last stream took place on a Thursday, and things did not go very well. Libromancer Pure was not nearly as good as I thought it was. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be great, but I thought we'd OTK a little bit more. We'd at least have like a 51% win rate, maybe get into a Platinum 4, but it wasn't quite the case. So I spent some time over the weekend, and I punched things up. I went into the lab, I looked at some lists, and I came up with something that is much better. We're already in Plat 4, I got there off camera, and though our win record isn't quite above 50%, we're getting there. We're on our way. So I have mixed the, the Libromancers with Dogmatica, which means we have the power of God and anime on our side. This would be better if I had a sword, but but yeah, we're mixing the, the ritual Dogmaticas with the Libromancers. They kind of help each other out. Uh, it's a little bit more like they don't get in each other's way, but the engine is so small that it ends up working very well. Basically, all we're playing is one White Knight of Dogmatica, one Dogmatic Calamity, one Ecclesia, and one copy of Fleur de Lis. And in addition to that, we're also playing three copies of Preparations of Rights Now. This is actually something I probably should have been playing in the previous version, but I wasn't quite thinking of this deck in the right way. So basically, Libromancer is always going to be a two-card combo. What you need is one of your Libromancer starters, either Geek Boy, Fire, or the Field Spell, and then you need a Ritual to reveal in the hand. So in order for this deck to work, you've got to increase the chances of getting both of those. So we've got nine copies of the Libromancer starters. Any one of these does it. I guess actually 11 because we've got Emergency Teleport now. 
And then we've also got 11 ways to get into the ritual. We're playing five rituals. We're playing three preparations of rites, which can search any level seven or lower ritual. And we've got three diviner of the herald, which when normal summoned, sends a herald of the arc light to the graveyard, which searches a ritual. And then everything else in the deck is pretty much just like a hand trap. The way you want to look at things, right, is that with 41 cards in this ratio we've got of the eight, eight and whatever's left, we should have an optimal chance, more than like 50% chance of opening exactly one of these, one of the rituals and one of our hand traps. And if we could do that, then we should have a pretty good chance of uh, winning the game, hopefully. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to see, it's all up to my skill. As for how the Dogmatica engine works, basically it revolves around this guy, White Knight of Dogmatica. Uh, you can ritual summon this with Dogmatic Calamity. Uh, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck while it's there, so you gotta make sure that's the last thing you do. If your opponent activates a card or effect, you could send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, then look at your opponent's extra deck, send one monster from theirs to the graveyard. This card gains attack equal to half of those combined monsters, so even though it only has 500, it can get pretty big during both players' turns if they do anything. Most importantly though, this acts as disruption because if they activate something, we can send an NTIS and pop something on their field. While also like taking the excess code out of their, their extra deck and just tossing it in the trash, just getting, getting rid of that, it can be really powerful against some decks. We won't always have the ability to search this, but between all the searching we have, the preparations of rights, the diviner of the herald, all the uh, the Libromancer stuff that searches. We should have the ability to get our, our regular like Doom Broker line where we have this, plus something like a Baron de Fleur, plus something like White Knight of Dogmatica. And if we can summon this, the thing about their ritual spell, Dogmatic Calamity, is that you can tribute monsters from your hand or field who equal the level, or send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. So if we can get this line, not only do we get this on board, but we're going to be sending Titanic Clad the Ash Dragon from the uh, extra deck to the graveyard. And if this is in the graveyard, at the end of the turn, you can add to your hand or special summon one Dogmatica uh, monster or Fallen of Albaz from your deck. So basically, in summoning this, you're also going to, during the end of the turn, summon out an Ecclesia, and then when Ecclesia is special summoned, you can search the uh, Fleur de Lis, who can special summon itself and negate a monster. So summoning this doesn't just give you the Entis pop, but it also gives you more field presence and the ability to do a monster negate. In fact, I, I'm thinking maybe I might even want to like bump this up to like two or three even. We'll have to see. This is what I'm going for right now though. We're still playing the one intervention. We're also playing one Libromancer Displaced. This is the other trap card. I've realized that like I kind of need to play another one of these. And this is the one that lets you steal a monster by bouncing a ritual back to the hand. It's not quite as good, but it's it's still pretty decent. So hopefully this should give us everything we need to compete in the modern arena. But there's only one way to find out for sure, and that's to take this beast and go onto the ladder to try our best to see if God and anime truly has the power to be in a rock and roll band. I, I don't know what I'm I don't know what I'm on about. We're gonna try though. <laughs> Alright. This is mostly full combo. Or not full combo, but this is the enough combo. Let's get this one, yeah. Search out Ben 10 in this version of the deck. We'll reveal this. We'll special summon the Geek Boy. Geek Boy will search the field spell. Field spell gets fire. Fire gets Doom Broker. And then what we do, chat, is we activate the, the, the ritual, and we ritual summon Doom Broker by sending the uh, Ben 10 from our hand to the graveyard. That'll not only get this on the field, but it'll trigger the Ben 10. Triggering the Ben 10 will allow us to search the Diviner of the Heralds. We can now normal summon the Diviner, use its effect, send a dang old uh, Herald of the Arc Light. That'll let us get uh, this, which if we had a way to the field spell, we would be good. And then as our fifth summon, we will make Barone de Fleur 
So even if they have a Nibiru, we can negate it at this point. If they don't have a Nibiru, then we've got like two plus things of interaction. And look, they had the Nibiru. I was right to fear. Get that shit out of here. No big rocks today. Gonna activate this. We're going to set the, uh, the trap. And then what we can do, since we've already used that, is we're gonna use these two and we're gonna make IP Mascarena. This will be a better use of our powers. And then we end the turn. So we've still got three disruptions even after using one on the Nibiru. That may not be enough. A lot of decks can play through that. I have to be very smart with how I interact things. Called by the free summon. Get that shit out of my face. I don't want to have to deal with that. Oh, you got a cross out designator, do you? You're trying to designate my cross, are you? Well, what if I said no? What if I negated your cross-out designator? Doom Broker. Consider your doom broken. That's not what a broker does, but you know. So I like to pretend. Uh, and then we can summon the fire from the graveyard. And fire will give us a search. So even if we didn't have four cards in hand to use for the uh, Nightmare Unicorn, we would search one here. Let's just go ahead and search another Geek Boy. That way we can discard one and still have enough to do the whole combo again. Yeah, I think I just want to keep them off of having enough monsters. So let's... Ooh, we could also make Heat Soul because these are both Link monsters. But yeah, we're just going to go for the Nightmare Unicorn. And go for the Unicorn activate this we're going to send that and we're going to shuffle back your circular now you have to have addition or subtraction i believe in order to get anything wait no they can just math okay can they otk from this position did i fuck up no because if they do this line they're locked into link fours or lower yeah you can only special summon link three or higher or you cannot link uh, summon link three or higher so they're locked out of excess code all right I think we can probably win from this position, or at least do very good, unless they drew into like Max C off of something. Um, we're gonna activate this. Activate. We'll get another field spell, just cuz. Activate the field spell. Add this guy. And this this is one of the few things that kind of differentiates my deck from some of the other ones. I Like I said, I looked at some other Libromancer lists, and a lot of people are playing like two Doom Broker, or they're playing the, the other Dogmatica Ritual. And I don't think either of those are all that worth it, but this guy, specifically in positions like this, can do a whole lot of damage. I want to make sure I don't play into Nibiru, because he's shown that he already has two, so he might have a third one. Let's activate, let's get back this, and then put it on the bottom of our deck. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this. We're gonna make this guy using the two cards on our field. And this should be more than enough to OTK. Fire burst again, double attacker, deals double battle damage, and you have very small monsters. 5,000, 5,000. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. But yeah, I, th I think you can really, just having that in the deck as a tool to summon is pretty good, better than the other rituals. And really, the, the thing I realized about this deck is you've just got to play like a certain number of rituals to make sure you can always get that two card combo. And having one that you can summon with the field spell, who's just pretty decent overall, I think is pretty good. Nice, nice. This is what you want to see going second. Although we didn't get a Libromancer part of our, our plan. Yeah, I gotta activate this now, otherwise I won't have a chance. It's probably birds. <laughs> or not. Huh. Ha! Huh. Sword Soul Metafish, you say? 
Now that's, that's something you don't see very often. A little cooking is happening. Now we're cooking by the book. Time to make shit tasty when you gotta get a recipe. Metaphys, don't be lazy. Um, okay, so this sucks, but we kind of have to do- oh wait. I can't send one from my deck to the graveyard. Uh, we're just setting a card. It'll probably get destroyed. Yeah, I don't know, but... Oh, they've got macro. Well, I kind of need my graveyard to activate Diviner of the Heralds. They just happen to open with, uh, you know, Dimension Shifter and Macro. So there's not much I can do. Excuse me? Huh? This fucker just summoned Dimension Shifter. Wait, that's Barone again. Oh, that's why they did it. The D shifter and the, the Ragnarok can make can just make Barone again. Yeah, this is this is what I would call cute. I don't think it'll work. I don't think you're gonna be able to get into like diamond with it. Not better than regular Sword Soul, but uh, you know, Macro Cosmos that that certainly won the game for you. Okay, we make this. Okay, here's what we do. We activate this. Uh, summon Mystigirl by sending the Fleur de Lis. Mystigirl summons, and when she's summoned, you can target a monster, its effects are negated, and its attack becomes zero. Then, we use this, and we make Fire Burst using monsters on the field. So now this can attack twice, does double battle damage into the zero attack. And if they have a Nibiru, we can negate it, but it doesn't seem to matter because we're doing 56 and we did it. We take the maxi challenge and win with the OTK. Finally, we lost to like four, four fucking maxis in a row, but this time we have the fire punch. Okay, 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 okay. Oh. Chat, you don't know. We're facing a very powerful foe this time. I've never seen Jojo. Yeah, I'll maxi here. Go ahead, make Sarah. Let's... Emergency teleport! Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. Oh, you're gonna maxi me. Unfortunately, I have double won the minigame. Let's special summon from the deck. A geeky boy! Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? I don't want you to activate things. Let's just go to battle. Crash. Yeah, we just kill Sarah before they can get more stuff. And then we'll activate fire, activate the effect. Hit me with the bottomless. No? No bottomless? Okay. Uh, this is unfortunate because I don't have all the stuff I want. That's fine though. Let's just do this. Doom! Okay. Well, they had to have one eventually. Um, Ecclesia. Hello there. Grab, ooh. Ooh, this is even better. Dogmatic Calamity. We finally get to activate it, chat. It's a Calamity. And we get to send Ash Dragon. Dun 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 And there we go. Ash Dragon. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and get that Fleur de Lis. Special summon it? No, I'll add it to my hand. White Knight out here, m'lady. Unfortunately, they have to activate something for me to do this. And I don't have any rituals now, so I can't summon this. Oh wait, this one doesn't have to be special summoned. I can tribute over my Doom Broker to summon this. And then I can use this to uh, add the ritual back. But he came back. Uh, and then I could try to ritual summon him again. I think I will. <laughs> well, 
we're right back where we belong. But here's what I wanted to do. We're going to activate this now. I'm going to send an Entis. And I'm going to look at your extra deck. Let's just see what we got here. Ah, uh, well, I don't ever want you accessing that Zeus, so let's send the Zeus to the graveyard. And then we'll use the Entis to uh, pop one of your back rows, shall we? Evenly! <laughs> Take that! The White Knight has all the power! All right, so we've been doing a little bit better, but we're still losing quite a few duels, mostly to math mech decks. So we just had a ban list hit, uh, Toad and what was the other one? Union Carrier both got banned. So we went ahead and broke those down while we could get maximum points for them. And we used them to get Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. This is particularly effective against not only Math Mech, but also Branded, which is also one of the best decks in the format. And it can also be used against Called by the Grave to make sure we win the Max C minigame more. That's right. Not only is Max C at the point where you have to play like nine cards, but now you're playing like another, another three just on top of that, just to be like, well, if I have this, I can win the Max C minigame more often. Which, please, Konami, the game should not be a game of who wins with Max C, who can resolve it. Because that's what it is 90% of the time. Maybe not 90% of the time, but it often feels like if one player opens with Max C, that's just over. Which is why it's worth it to play like 12 cards just to ensure that that resolves or theirs doesn't. We'd have so much room to buy more URs if you got rid of the one that everyone has to play. But uh, yeah, enough rants about that. We got that. And then in addition, I added in another Ecclesia and I added in another uh, White Knight of Dogmatica. And we took out the Fairy Girl Libromancer because she's the least useful. Uh, I want to try to get this on board along with the Dogmatica stuff more often. And I think adding both this and this to search it and the field spell will allow that to happen more. So we're up to 42 cards. Hopefully it won't affect the ratios too much. But let's go ahead and see how this one does. Broker with a little bit of doom. Oh no, a super factorial. That can be very powerful. Very powerful indeed. Would be a shame if someone ghost belled it. Dun 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 dun. No interaction for you. Get that shit out of here. It stays in the graveyard. Sometimes dead is better, chat. I can beat over you with this if I make it with the other one, which sucks. I think I have to do that though. I have to use the one punch. It's the only way I can go. Otherwise I can't target or get rid of either of these. Um, I, and I have to make it with Doom Broker because I need one in the graveyard. So we're going to do this. We're going to make Doom Broker. There we go. Now the good thing about Doom Broker is that he searches the, spe the trap and the trap works with, you know, either player. Valor. Valor's the one thing I don't have for this. So we're just kind of fucked, but uh, you know, we were going to be fucked either way. Let's go ahead, make this, at least we won't go quietly into the night chat. It's time to be fire bursted. Go into the battle phase. I'm not afraid to die. Activate, gain 200 attack which is just enough to get over you. 400, and then you go down and I attack again. Take that. <laughs> um, and then I set this and pray. It would have been nice if we got the trap that like then had an Omni negate and we could get more cards on, but uh, yeah, we're probably just dead. Yeah, we're dead. Oh, okay. Mask Arena and they can go into something next turn. Pot of Prosperity. I could draw potentially anything. Uh, let's go for it. We're digging deep, baby. Let's just hope one of those cards isn't another Ash. Uh, probably the IP. There's no way I can go into that at this point and do anything. Okay, they're using the IP now, so I'm going to figure out what we've got. A pity this can't send from the extra deck. Could you imagine? Yep, Avramax. It's times like this I wish I had Forbidden Droplet. You can negate the effects of one face-up card on the field. Yeah! 
Floor can negate. I think we still want to go for this, because then we can go this into Ecclesia, into... Yeah. So we go Nadir's Servant. We get to send... Uh, oh yeah, we have to send something. Less than or equal to. Okay, so I can't send this and get something. It has to be something big. And I can't target them with that. Uh, yeah, we just send the Titanic Clad. And then we get Ecclesia. And then we special summon the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia activates. It gets us the Fleur de Lee. Activate the Fleur de Lee. Special summon. Be good night. Uh, negate the effects of a card on the field. Yes, you are negate. Go ahead in with this. Unfortunately, they get to spin back. Oh, I can't be destroyed by battle. I forgot. Yeah, and then you have to go shuffle the floor. Oh, they just shuffled it back. I forgot it did that. Chat, do you know what this means? During the end phase, Titanic Clad activates and we get to add the Fleur de Lis back to our hand. <laughs> Uh, special summon? No. There we go. They had to do that, though. They would have taken enough damage. <laughs> We're in this. We've got it. Perhaps. Maybe. Unfortunately, I can't do this unless there's an extra deck monster on the field. Which sucks, because they can negate it with whatever they summon out. Oh, no. Am I going to get final Sigma again? What is with all these math mech players actually playing the sword? No wonder you're stuck in fucking plat. Oh, but its attack becomes doubled even in the damage step. God damn it. We were doing so good. Holding a Gamma for Doom Broker. Entirely possible. Yep. They knew, chat. Wait. I can negate that with this? Because it would summon something from Graveyard? Take that, Gamma! Huh? What? I had no idea that... <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, they've still got it, but, you know. Doom Broker resolves. They can just Gamma again. I mean, that's why we wait for them to commit literally anything to the field before we do something. Fuck. We Max C, they Gamma, and then we hit the Gamma with this. Yeah, I'm gonna lose stuff anyway. They can't Gamma this. And any other Sword Soul, they'll have to summon onto the field first so they won't be able to Gamma it. They could Gamma this if they want to, but then I can activate the Max C and there's nothing they can do. Get wrecked, Scrublet! Unless they've got a second Gamma. No. So now the question is, can they win the Max C challenge? They're down to, I'd say, four cards, but they're actually down to three cards because they've already used the long one in their hand and they can't do anything else. So I'm trying to think. Omega's 28. That gets me a draw. Then they could normal summon, like a Moye. Summon the token. That's a second draw. Make the Chi Chow. That's a third draw. But then they get another card. But that gets me... I have three draws to get into something that can stop the OTK, which is actually not very likely. Now that I'm thinking about it, I probably just shouldn't have activated fire. I should have waited for them to commit and let the, um, the, uh, Gamma be dead in their hand. That was a misplay on my part. Draco Berserker. All right! Best case scenario. They don't have anything. Hand is nothing but hand traps. Discount hand trap warehouse. And that's a pretty dang good draw. Okay, so we activate this first. At this point, we just start activating stuff to see if we can bait this out. 
Um, so I don't think we can OTK no matter what we do, because they've got such high attack. But we can actually deal with that in a way that's very funny. Uh, it'll take our OTK, but I think we can do it. We can afford to do that at this point. We're going to summon this. Oh, wait, we need to use a card on the field. Yeah, so we're sending the agent. Sucks to lose the agent, but we're fine. Because if we use this with the monster on the field, we can attack directly. And if we deal battle damage, we can shuffle a monster into the deck. And this activates during the damage step, so they can't chain to it. So we hit him for that. And then we're going to... Doom Broker. Just going to set this again. Go ahead and Ecclesia. And yeah, there we go. I couldn't have done that beforehand because they would have banished the Ecclesia and then I wouldn't be able to summon the, uh, the Fleur de Lis and go for damage. But once we got rid of that, now we have a negate. We can use the uh, called by on their, their Tenyi in the graveyard so they don't get the bounce. And we're just gonna have basically three disruptions plus follow up to do it all again next turn. All right, so short little change, just a 0.5 kind of change. We've taken out the, the Pot of Prosperity and we've taken out the uh, Cross Out Designator because the Prospy I don't think works all that well and the Designator, unlike something like Called by the Grave, even though it's supposed to accomplish the same thing, often doesn't because when you set it, it does nothing during the opponent's turn. Whereas this can kind of disrupt them. So we're basically just removing two cards from the deck to make it a little bit more consistent so that we're more likely to get the stuff that we want. Uh, we also made a slight change to the extra deck. We took out the, the Draco Berserker of Tenyi because we've never made it. And we put it on Underworld Goddess. This is something we might be able to make if we get a good hand with IP Masquerina using the opponent's stuff. And there's just been a couple times in general where we kind of wanted it. So we're gonna try that out, see if it works even better. We're like right on the cusp of being good. There's just so much random shit in like plat two and below. Decent. I do. Let's try this, shall we? We're gonna go for Cyframe Lord Omega. I can dodge out of the way of your stuff. Unless you got Solemn Judgment. Do you, do you got Solemn Judgment, son? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, and I can't tag out in the battle phase. All right. Well, first of all, let's put the Nadir Servant back in our deck because that gives us one of our few opportunities to break through a skill drain or something. Oh, it puts it in the graveyard. I thought it put it back into the deck. Oh, okay. Not activating it immediately. Ha-ha! <laughs> I hit the fountain! I'm still probably dead, you know, but... Uh, one type of monster. Send all other types to the graveyard. This is a psychic. I could control another psychic if I wanted to. Uh, I don't think I want to. Let's activate Omega again. Let's just get him the fuck out of here. We hit the fountain again. Summon a fairy. Activate the fairy's effect. Send a fucking Entis. How about you just get that shit out of my face, Runic? I'm tired of your shit! Oh! <laughs> All right, so as you may or may not have noticed by the fact that I'm wearing a snazzy new shirt, it is, it is another day. Uh, the last stream did not go very well. We didn't have many duels worth showing. And unfortunately, our win rate is still not higher than 50%. Somehow, either because of the meta or just misplays or what, I, I've not been doing very well. But like before, I sat down in between streams, labbed this deck, and tried to make it a little bit better. And this is what I came up with. We're now playing a 50 card version. It has essentially the same win condition as before. It's just got more resources in it. And the theory behind this is that while we are playing a bigger deck, the ratio of everything is still the same. We have more ways to get into uh, the Libromancer package, more ways to get into a ritual monster, and more like hand traps and tech cards. 
The ratio is the same as the 40 card build, so we still have a, an equal chance of opening up the combo. But we also have things like if we uh, max C, we can now draw into an Abiru. Now, if we get caught in a grind game with Runic, we have Cosmic Cyclones that can maybe turn the page. We have things like Forbidden Droplet that can take care of monsters that can't be targeted. And we have slightly higher chances of opening the Dogmatica package. That has increased a little bit, with Dogmatica being flexible enough where if we need to get a ritual monster, we can, and if we already have one, then we can set up for White Knight or Fleur de Lis or something like that. So I'm hoping that this works out a little bit better. There's also one thing is that our, our chances of getting a brick are lower, because even though I've increased everything else, the, the number of traps and everything hasn't really increased. We're playing like one more and that's about it. So hopefully we should be good. We'll see. I have a couple more ideas in the tank we can try, but we're going to see if the 50 card version works first. Oh, it didn't matter. Nothing matters anyway. Sitting on skill drain, what can you do? Hope you draw your cosmic cyclone. <laughs> yes, he used it there, chat. But now that that's gone, I can send Entis. I can use Entis to pop the skill drain. I'm still- <laughs> And they surrender! I didn't have any follow-up. I didn't have anything they could do, but they're like, if you, you know, if I can't skill drain you, it's, it's just no use in even playing, you know? What's the point of playing if my opponent can play the game? <laughs> All right, so it's been about two hours of trying that 50 card version and unfortunately it's not working mostly because we keep running into goddamn Max C. If you lose the Max C minigame with this deck, you just lose. There is no way to make like a half combo. You've, you've got to, in order to do your basic stuff, summon about five monsters. And if they draw five cards, they just win. If you end your turn in plat and you don't summon stuff, they just win. So we cannot play a 50 cards deck because even though we have a bunch of tech cards, there's only a certain number of things that stop Maxi. It's Ash Blossom, Called by the Grave, and uh, cross out designator. And we need to maximize our chances of winning the Max C mini game, because that's the only way we can win the game, period. Because as I always say, Konami for some reason decides to keep this the optimal strategy in the card game. It's, it's exceptionally frustrating. So we're doing this version, it's back down to 40 cards, and we've switched from preparation of rights to pre-prep. Basically, we're running White Knight of Dogmatica along with Dogmaticabra, which is not as good of a ritual spell, but because it mentions White Knight of Dogmatica in it, if we get this, we can get both of those. That not only allows us to do our Libromancer combos because it gets a ritual monster in our hand, but then hopefully we can, after we're done with that, actually use those monsters as material to summon this. Um, this doesn't use cards from the extra deck, so we've gotten rid of like Titanic Clad and stuff. But you can summon a ritual from the graveyard. So what I'm thinking is like we use this, get this, and then we're going to summon something like a Doom Broker by using this as material. And then we can use the Dagmaticabra to summon this from the graveyard by using the uh, Libromancers on the field or anything else we happen to have in hand. That's why we're playing another agent so we can perhaps use this as material as well. Also just to make it so that we can get our intervention back more consistently. Just have more high level monsters. We're still playing the other Libromancer trap because the grind game has been a big problem and Forbidden Droplet has been working out pretty well with us. Uh, finally, we've got Bootin. This is something that's been recommended to me a few times. Not exactly sure if this will work, but basically how this will work is Diviner of the Heralds. If we summon it, we send a Herald of the Arclight that gets us a ritual, we get our combos going. And then if we use this as ritual material, if we tribute it instead of using it as a synchro material, it'll summon the Bootin from the deck, which is a uh, level one tuner. And then we can use this in a Geek Boy to make a Herald of the Arclight. We'll basically have a negate 
that also shuts down something like Math Mech because they can't send the, uh, the Sigma from the deck to the graveyard. This banishes it instead. So it might be slightly better than, than something like a Barone de Fleur. And then in addition to that, because we've used those, we'll have the, uh, we'll have something else on the field like a fire that we can maybe use as material to summon the, the White Knight of Dogmatica. At least that's the idea. Not sure if it'll work, but we're at the point where we're kind of desperate to try anything, so... Let's see how it goes. Okay. In that case, we activate this. We send off the Dark Angel. And we negate the only thing that's left to activate. Make IP, yeah. Okay, he still has some attack, good. Go to the battle phase. Attack directly. Let's just shuffle this back into the deck, shall we? And that's it for this turn. We set this. Okay, so we negate that. Special summon the fire. Fire searches. Tribute summon. We're gonna use this. We're gonna go ahead and make Nightmare Unicorn. And we get to draw a card, chat. Haven't you always wanted to draw a card? What if that were back in your deck? Oh wait, it doesn't point up, it points down. Never mind. For some reason, I always think Unicorn is left, right, and up. No, we're still alive, chat! We exist! Ironically, if I had Magic Girl, I would be in much better condition. So what we do is we make Doom Broker using this on the field. We get our trap back just in case. And then we use these two on the field to make the Fire Burst. Oh, he's got a summon animation now, chat! They finally showed the Libromancer some love! So I attack directly. Because I didn't attack a, uh, a hero, I can shuffle this back into the deck. There we go. And then that allows us to attack this. Wait, why aren't we doing double battle damage? Shouldn't we have done double? Oh, we did do double battle damage. Okay, good. Good, the double battle damage wins us the game. We beat heroes, which are not a competitive deck. In the slightest, but you know, we got to see that summon animation. We hit the one punch, so we did it. We got it. We're good. Great. We open with the pig. Critter. Ah. Well, what we do is this, right? We summon the pig, and then we make fucking Herald of the Arc Light. <laughs> so now we've got a negate. <laughs> That's what we do. And then because this is a, it's not a tuner, but we can banish this to make this into a tuner. And then make, I don't know, um, something. No, we got rid of all our level 8s because we hardly make any of them. And now we have one, two, three, four pieces of disruption. Four pieces of disruption and a kind of floodgate. If they're on Math Mech, they're fucked. If it's Runic, we're fucked. <laughs> Especially if they Lava Golem us. A Lava Golem would be absolutely devastating here. Destroy all spell traps. Uh, yeah, I'll use a spell trap to stop that. The Synchro only banishes cards that are sent from the, uh, the hand or deck to the graveyard. So it's specifically good against Math Mech, because if they try to activate Circular, it banishes Sigma. Uh, we Ash Blossom this. Called by, except 
because we have the Herald, our ash isn't in the graveyard. It's banished. So they can't call by it. <laughs> I didn't even realize that worked, but that is, that is kind of hilarious. All right, so after playing quite a few more duels, we're still not doing very good. It's been very rough. There's one card in particular that we're thinking might be very good in this deck, and that's Seravius, the Ancient and Ascended, a ritual hand trap that can negate any effect that targets by discarding it. Not only is it another ritual we could put into our deck, but it'll stop things like Runic from targeting our monsters. Unfortunately, it's, it's a ultra rare. We need to play three of it, and it's not in any pack. It's only in the master packs. Run that back. And this also has Seravius, which might be something we end up playing in the future, actually. This is a pretty good tech card in here. So if we need it, we need to spend money. And this is already the most expensive episode yet, so I didn't want to do more. But some some very nice people in the chat have donated. Specifically, Darsh V33, let's get the names completely right, Angel Crab, and JSB Shingo. Shingo, Shingo, one of those two. They donated another $80. So uh, we're gonna try that, see how it works, and hopefully that'll be enough. Another 6,000 gems. Oi. Okay, it turns out I was wrong. Turns out Seravius is in the, uh, the Herald pack. So we have a pack to open to hopefully pull him and everything else we could break down from that pack because, uh, you know, I'm never playing Heralds. Do not ask me to play Heralds. I will not do it. Let's go ahead and generate one of those. Ding. Well, we've got one chance to get it, chat. Will our second Serabius be in the first pack that we open? Let me see it. Well, that's not it, but... Well, <laughs> well there you go. There's two of them. We got two Serabius right off the bat. All we need to do is get one more. We'll, we'll open a couple more of these, see what we could do. But wow, that, that worked pretty well. Oh, we got, we got a rare. It's in the right part. Show me Serabius. Hey! Oh, we got the third one. We need it. We got it. There we go. Motabelle. All right. So now that we have our Serabius and we put it in here, we've pretty much gotten rid of the Dogmatica stuff. This is no longer the power of God and anime. It's now just and anime. It's, it's pure Libromancer again. We're back to pure Libromancer because the Dogmatica engine didn't necessarily serve us too well. Maybe we'll put it back in. Maybe there's something I was missing, some way we can get it more consistently. But it felt like when we could summon White Knight of Dogmatica, it was really good, but we could barely get it and the Libromancers on at the same time. And uh, otherwise, like the, the Dogmaticas were just locking us out of the extra deck and preventing us from making more stuff. So hopefully this will work. Uh, I'm gonna try a couple more duels tonight since uh, it's been a little long and then we'll try next time But uh, not still not looking too good and I'm not sure what else to combine with this I feel like there's other things I could put in here, but there's just no nothing's coming up All right We've got one two three and a half things of disruption they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards. Almost a full fourth of their deck. The the closest thing on it's fucking runic. I hate you. No, you're not destroying me. Get out of here. Yeah, I'll negate that. There we go. You're negated. Give me my search. They had a kaiju. Adventure runic? Are you shitting me? Uh, no, I'm not letting you get another field spell. Get that shit out of my face. Um, and we'll send this as well because I don't want them to bounce it back to their hand and have another kaiju. So you're negated and you're negated. 
If you want a Draco back, you're gonna give me something I want. Uh, if you, without, without Max C, how would a deck like Runic ever compete, chat? Don't, don't you know, Runic would starve without Max C there to help it along. It's such a weak deck. It needs Max C in order to function. And we all know that having this here is very healthy for the game. You know who needs to draw like five? The deck that draws six per turn. You took my only starter. Now I'm gonna starve. Let's see, if I could bait this out, I might be able to destroy the fountain with the, this. Ash, okay, that's fine. If I can resolve a diviner, I'm like, good. Okay, here's where I normal summon this. This is like prime negate. If they're gonna negate something, it's gotta be this, right? Okay. Hello there. What if I were to pop your runic fountain? Oh yeah, I forgot. Huggin can stop that, can it? Okay, let's try this first. Activate. Okay, they're negating that. Then we can use the agent, get it back. Negate its effects until the end of the turn. How about no? I, I love a Saravius. Saravius is so fucking good. And I think this might be the OTK chat. I think we might have what it takes to be a rock and roll band. I mean, I don't want to get too caught up. They could still have literally anything in their hand, but let's see. Let's, we'll tribute off the Herald. We summon the Doom Broker. Uh, did we already get the Bootin? No, they haven't banished the Bootin, which means we can start the Boot Scootin' Boogie. Um, destroy it. Well, fuck. If that's the case, then I don't think we have it. And especially now, they can just activate Fountain. Every time I think maybe I've played through enough disruption to stop this fucking deck, they're like, nah, I'll just draw five more. Nah, it's fine. So we could make Dawn Dragster. That negates two spells, right? Activate. Summon the Fire Burst using these two. Big. Big animation. Fists! Attack over that. Yeah, I'm not gonna OTK them anyway. And if I negate it, I would lower. Oh yeah, it's not destroyed. I'm dumb. It wouldn't have been destroyed anyway. Well, I tried, chat. I really honestly tried, but sometimes you can try so hard and get so far, and in the end, it's fucking runic. All right, so we're still on a losing streak, uh, and things have not been going well. Mostly we've been bricking on having like an extra trap and an extra agent, so we're down to just one trap again, one agent again. Makes us worse at the grind game, but we haven't even gotten to the grind game lately because it's been going so bad, so we cut those out. We put in triple tactics talent. I can't imagine this will make things better, but uh, we're, we're gonna try. Mirror Jade plus Branded in red. That might be enough to get them what they need. So we'll activate the fire. Boot up do, I command you to burn. Fire gets us. Oh, okay. Just launching that now? Gotcha. Guardian Chimera, I see. Uh, yeah, we need to use this. Well, so much for that, chat. Of course, knowing my luck, they'll Lava Golem Lightning Storm us and just completely annihilate our soul. 
by tributing two monsters on your side of the field, I'm gifting you this powerful monster. Lava Golem! Alright, show me the lightning storm. You got that too? While you're at it, you know? Go ahead, hit me with the lightning storm. No. No, it's not lightning storm, it's sky strikers. Well, at least I can max see this. So, you know, I'll be drawing one card, maybe two, perhaps even three cards. Um, and if I don't die, then I'll be in a decent way. Oh boy, Bootin. That's what you always want to see, right? Oh, I draw one card. Okay. Fire. That would be nice if I had a ritual to reveal, but I don't. Uh, change to attack. You know what? Fuck it. Bootin says hi. Zero attack token. Meet 200 attack pig. <laughs> Excuse me. Lava golem plus enemy controller. They're just, how retro, chat? Very retro, very old school, you know. They're on their streets, they're doing what they can. All right. All right, what is, what is this, Marshmallow and like in Magic Cylinder? Oh boy, another one. Just what I always wanted. I'm starting to think this isn't Sky Striker at all, but something else. Uh, fuck it, I have two of them. I might as well put one out here. Pity I don't have any level fives or anything I could do. That would be kind of neat. Oh, uh, it's fine. We'll just go in. 1800. Well, you know what? Now you're taking the thousand. So I hope you enjoy taking your thousand. Damage step. Uh, I'm gonna send this. We'll just put you down to 15. Get out of here. Oh, okay. Neat. Cool story, bro. I liked the story. I read it. It was it was fine. It was an interesting thing. This is another fucking uh, goddamn stupid ass fucking gradle, isn't it? I'm not even. I'm gonna send this. Uh, yeah. Now I got another ritual monster in my hand. Let's get big punchy boy, and let's go ahead and make goddamn Baron de Flaren, shall we? Baron de Fleur. Uh, let's pop it. What do you think? Is it a Gradle? Is it another goddamn Gradle? You magnificent bastard! I read your book! And we still got a negate, so if they have fucking Nibiru or something, which I mean is possible. Also, just in case, just in case you do have two fucking battle faders, I'm making Herald of the Art like with my bootin'. This is what we call in the business a boot scootin' boogie. Three, four, five, six, seven. If I tribute that, you know, fuck it. Let's, let's, let's ritual summon just in case. Just in fucking case. We're gonna make fire burst. You're gonna see a summon animation that you probably haven't seen before. I think I'm the only one in history who's seen this yet. Look at him, big fiery fists coming on down here. He does double battle damage. Go, go, 3,000. Okay, he doesn't have fucking battle fader. Good, I hope you don't. Let's just hit him for 56. Oh, I'm so glad we did not lose to that. I'm more angry than I... This is the angriest win I've ever had. It's like when you... <laughs> I don't know what it's like. I can't think of a metaphor. I've never been happy angry before. All right, this is good. This is fine. This is nice. Unless they have Maxi. If they have Maxi, I'm going to cry. And there you go, that should show you the power of this deck when it goes off. We've got a Floodgate, we've got Nightmare Unicorn, we've got a Negate, we've got a Negate for anything that targets, we've got Setup for next turn. 
We're ending with three cards in our hand. We went from five and we only lost two. We'd have four if they didn't use the uh, ghost bell. Yeah, if they sphere mode us, we're screwed. Hopefully we don't get... Okay, Kaiju is not that bad. They Kaiju'd probably the best thing. Yeah, that's fine. It's Numeron. Yeah, we know how to deal with Numeron, chat. Because they use that effect and it's only once per turn. And this can negate the activation of effect. Or ne negate the effect. So they're still stuck with the Numeron on the field. And then we special summon back the, uh, the agent. They had one in hand! Okay, well we can negate that. So unless they have the third calling in hand, we're pretty dang good. And we'll get to search again. Please don't have the third fucking calling in hand. Okay, thank you! Thank you very much. Get out of here. I'm tired of your shit. We searchy search. Negate its effects. Uh, yeah, we Seravis that one. We need this to resolve, kind of. I wish we could add back any ritual monster. Being able to recycle Seravis would be so good! But we cannot. I think we just go for the Doom Broker. Maxi, how about no? Point. And now that they've activated a monster effect on our turn, we can triple tactics them. Let's go ahead and triple tactics. Do we just draw or do we look at their hand and shuffle a card back? I think we want to draw two. Ding. That's very nice. Very nice indeed. They've already used the- oh wait, but they can negate with Huggin'. Ah, uh, that's fine. Yeah, I think we send the Entis this time. We at least get the Huggin' away. Huggin' must banish. Then we activate this. We summon the Libromancer using the Herald. There we go. This activates, so we summon the piggy. Oink oink, motherfucker! Oh, I should have summoned this first. Gosh darn it. Oh, uh, we're still fine. We can use these two to make the race car! Vroom vroom! Battle phase. All right, we're not great. We've we've been this far with Runic before. They can easily just roll back into things. But with two negates, we may just have what it takes. It depends exactly what two they draw. The fact that they didn't activate anything else makes me think that they drew the ones they needed, the destroy and negate. Maxi, sure. Fucking emergency teleport? What are they cooking, chat? Punks. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think I'm gonna negate that. I mean, no. All right! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. My baby don't mess around because she loves me now and this I know for sure. Clap, clap, clap. But does it really matter? Does it really matter? Going out the door. Clap, clap, clap. Give me another Serabius. I'm done with your shit. I'm tired of you, Runic. They've got exactly one. I, I have two ways to negate it. Please tell me they're fucking dead. They've gotta be dead. This does piercing. We'll just go in, pierce over you. I don't even need my ritual summons to kill you. I could use ritual summons, but having a, a school teacher attack you is better. Huh. <sighs> so we finally beat Runic. And all it took was playing the worst version of Runic and uh, we, we ranked back up. We're back into platform. <laughs>
<laughs> Can we get higher than Plat 4? Uh, we'll have to find out in the next stream, because I am, I am done for tonight. All right, here we are, day number seven, stream number four, which is the halfway point. We do six streams total. We've got three behind us, and this is start of the next three. Now, I'm not making any big changes so far. Last time we played, we were doing pretty good. We made our way back into plat four. So I'm gonna try this build out a little bit longer, see if we can maybe get some a little higher now that we've got the Seravius and the triple tactic talents that seem to be working for us. And if not, I do have another bun in the oven. I do have something cooking up. You're gonna, I'm gonna pull a Thanos or something and something. I don't know. I'm not good at this improv thing. What do you think I am? Math Mac, I see. Here's Mac C. And there we go. They've ended their turn. And I think I can OTK from this position unless they've got like four hand traps. I guess we'll find out. Normal summon. Activate. Alright. Do I want to do this? I think I probably do, so I can get this to resolve. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do this, because again, I think I can OTK from here. Get out of here. Drip. This sends the dang old Herald of the Arclight. We're going to get... I think we want Fire Burst in this case, because we got everything else. It didn't seem like they had an Ash there, so I think this should be good, unless they've got another Veiler. The only thing we have to worry about now, I believe, is Nibiru. Like, Nibiru exactly. Oh no! They have exactly Nibiru chat! I'm fucked! Well, we tried our hardest. We had the OTK. We won the maxi challenge. Sometimes your opponent just opens with Nibiru. Fortunately, we can still do some stuff. Wow, that's a big token. It's a shame to get rid of it, but this will be better. And I can't allow, I can't allow Math Mech. We'll tribute the token. We'll make the Doom Broker. And then because we made it using monsters on the field, we can just attack directly. And then we use this to shuffle them back into the deck. So now we've got a negate and an ash, and they've got three cards. Now Math Mech is very capable of OTKing from just, if they can stick two cards on the field, we're good. Oh yeah, I mean that's, I've got to ash the two for one. And then I think we've got that, because we just negate whatever the last card is, and there we go. So a bit difficult, but Max C wins us a game. Oh boy, I, I still don't like it, even when I win, because I know it was off the back of that fucking card and nothing else. Well, I mean, I guess we did do other stuff, but, you know, it would have been a lot harder to play through any kind of board if they had made one. <laughs> Why am I opening the trap again? <laughs> I hate the world, and there's the one bootin'. Guess we need to play another gosh darn ritual. This is the second game in a row we've opened our one of trap that we want to search, and no way to get to a ritual monster. Maybe I need to increase the ratio of the ritual monsters. I play Ben 10, I play three Herald that gets me to Ben 10. I play three of the field spell that gets me to a ritual. I play two um, emergency teleport that does it. And I play like five rituals total. Like that, there we go. If a, either of the, if any of these cards had been replaced with this, we would have had it. Except for this guy, I need this guy. Ha ha! Flip up the bootin. Synchro summon Herald of the fucking Arc Light. Yo, what up? Triple Tactics Talent. And now I'll activate Pot of Greed to draw two cards from my deck. Ding! Oh, and I haven't summoned yet. Normal summon this. Activate the effect. We've already got a Herald here, so we can send fucking Entis and pop one of the back rows. Mirror Force! Mirror Force! And they surrender. <laughs> Pop the Mirror Force, win the game. 
you know, sometimes that's all you need. Coughing baby defeated. <laughs> and then we activate this. And this is, I believe, like the best version, the best hand that this deck can produce. This version of the deck, here is the optimal play. IP into Unicorn, plus Barone, plus the Libromancer, plus Protection with Surveyus, plus Hand Trap. Like if this was Max C, that's the only way we could possibly be better. All we gotta do is hope they don't hit fucking Sphere Mode or Lava Golem. If they do that, then I just go to the Synchro version and, and cry. And it's Runic. Yeah, we stopped that with Cerevis. Yeah, we'll intervention that. No, no, I don't think you will. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Runic, get the fu Oh, come on, you piece of shit. Get that shit out of my face, card of demise. They had two cards of demise. You've got to be fucking shitting me. Come the fuck on, into pot of desires. Uh, <laughs> there's too much draw power, Konami. Why you get, Why are you doing this to me, Biggie Smalls? Why? And they can, I've negated five cards and they can still set five pass. Fuck it, we're doing this now. They can't activate them now. So this is my one chance to maybe shuffle one of those away. Let's get the one they set earlier. I'm almost certain that's a floodgate because if it were a runic thing, they would have activated it. Excess code can wipe the field. They have a way to do that. Like the type you want to keep. I'll keep the warrior. And then I'll pop that. And it's skill drain. Look at how skillfully they can drain the game chat. Do I have a non-monster way to get rid of that? I don't think I do. Might as well bait it out now, pull off that band-aid while I can. Oh, pain. And yeah, as Chad is pointing out, it's not runic. I could beat potentially runic. It's the fact that one card shuts down my entire deck with no cost. So even if I can, if I can play through the runic half of the deck, the fact that these awful floodgates exist mean I'm still screwed. And there they go, chat. Sit on skill drain to win the game. We almost maybe had them. Almost maybe. Pain. All right, so as you can probably tell, things are still not going very well. And I'm, I'm honestly kind of baffled as to why. I feel like this deck, like there's no way that it's worse than Galaxy Eyes. And yet its win weight is like worse than Galaxy Eyes. This is like dire. It's it's just not, not going very well. Maybe the go second OTK just gave it an advantage. Uh, I don't know, but uh, we're, we're getting to the point of desperation. There's nothing, I can't mix like branded or runic or anything with this but I did come across this idea this was brought to me by a patron who showed me this video it's from Itachi Yu-Gi-Oh and it's basically Synchromancer it's Libromancer but instead of using the normal summon on a Herald of the Divine or whatever its name is and then going into just like a plain old Baron de Fleur instead what we're doing is we're using the Libromancer fire with a Synchro level one or Synchron and we're using that to make a junk speeder. So these are, we can use either of these two and they're also searchable with synchro overtake. Uh, and we can make this. This thing says you can't summon out of the extra deck except for synchro monsters. Also summon as many synchro tuners as possible from the deck uh, as, as long as they have different levels. So we're playing two level ones because we need those to get our, our, our things started. And then we've got Necron Synchron that's a level two, a level three and a level four. So so unless we draw these, uh, we're gonna be able to get like four tuners on the field and just go nuts. Just uh, if things go go well, we can make like Hyper Librarian, then make like a Stardust Charge, then make a Bar Barone de Floor while drawing two in the process. We can end on a Herald of Arclight or they're like, make this and then use it as material for something 
and go into things. We can use Chaotic Ruler in order to try to search out an effect veiler. We've been testing this and the, 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 the ceiling going first is kind of crazy. It's it's like on par almost with um with like Drytron. Like more negates than you have cards in hand. At least getting close to that. Because you're gonna draw a whole bunch and you're gonna get some stuff. Oh, and we can search Starlight Road. We can search Starlight Road, search Surveyors, search Effect Veiler, which are not like negates in themselves, but they help you survive. You know, this is basically lightning storm insurance. We, we may end up taking this out, but when you summon this, you just get a, a spell trap that mentions Stardust in its name. So, so why not try it out? Uh, now the problem with this, of course, is that it's not any better going second. In fact, it might be slightly worse going second because we no longer have the forbidden droplets, but we're already losing going second. Like the only thing I could think of would be to like try to reform the, the, the go second OTK Libros, but I don't think those are working very well. And this honestly, does have kind of a decent uh, win con, not only because the ceiling's really high, but also just the fact that like, you know, it doesn't matter how much of your Libro stuff gets negated. All that matters is getting fire on the field. If you get fire on the field, if you could bait out a couple negations with this and then normal summon a tuner, you're just off to the races as far as what you can do. Let's see if this works out. I'm doubtful. I don't think it'll necessarily be better, but if, you know, if we're not gonna get into diamond, we can at least be interesting while we're not in diamond. Show some cool synchro packages. I believe in a thing called love. All right, we've got pretty good. We got pretty good. Okay, we'll activate this because if this doesn't resolve, we're still perfectly fine. Hit me with the ashy. Okay, they're not. We'll go for this. Let's activate this. Now ash this. All right, I knew I sniffed an ash. So that keeps us off of the uh, the Libromancer part of the deck, unfortunately. But that's fine, because as I explained before, the Libromancer part of the deck is there to bait out negations at this point. Now we're synchro summoning. You thought it was this, but guess what? Now you have no ash for the junk speeder. <laughs> and if they're like, oh, that's fine. I've got the effect veiler. I've got the imperm. I have things to tell you. Wait. You can add one junk monster? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's get this, and this, and this, and one of these. Everyone gets to play! Big numbers all over the place! And we'll just go ahead and use this effect and search Starlight Road because we fucking can! Why wouldn't we, you know? You know? Okay, so first things first, I'm the greatest. Let's try this first. We're gonna go into Chaotic Magical Dragon, the Dragon of Chaotic Dragon Dragon. Search out what we can. Nothing, nothing. Unfortunate. Uh, and then we make what? Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, right? Right. So there's one. Then we summon back the Chaos Ruler. We don't have a light. So we'll have to get rid of our Seravis, but that's probably worth it. Buy Seravis and, oh yeah, we get rid of the Junk Synchron. Summon back this. And then we use these two to go into Bar on the Floor. And then we could discard something to bring something back, but it's not enough. But we're fine. We're perfectly fine, chat. Uh, we're maybe not perfectly fine. You know, previously one ash might have been enough to stop us. And now we can, oh, oh great. Critters abandoned us. He's like, fuck this. I wanted to see Libromancers, not Synchrons. What the hell's going on here? Add one Therion from your deck to your hand. All the Therions activate though, right? Yeah, we're good. They have to have something in the graveyard in order to do that. All right, we did it. We ranked up, take that. See, it turns out our opponent was on Therions and they're not good. So once more, we're back up to plat four. 
Let's just, let's hope. I mean, that's, that's been the thing so far, right? As soon as we get to plat five, like this deck is absolutely dominating. Every version of this deck has dominated plat five. And then as soon as we get to four, it's like a brick wall. So let's see if this, uh, this does any better now that we're up a little bit, shall we? Let's see, show me what you got. And we drew every tuner in the fucking deck. Oops, all tuners, once again. What more could we possibly want from a life such as this? There is one hope. We basically have to do this in order to play. No, we're not gonna activate the effect because it would cost too much. This can get over the, uh, the tax dragon. All right. We have cleared the tax dragon. Now we can do some stuff and some things. Oh, uh, we're still in a bad way, but we can try. Okay. He comes back, but he doesn't make you pay taxes anymore. So we get fire. Activate fire. Special summon. Search. Then we're going to activate the synchro overtake. That allows us to reveal the Jet Warrior, special summon the Jet Synchron. Now that we've got a four and a one, we can make fucking Junk Speeder. <laughs> junk Speeder ahoy! I have not yet begun to Synchro Summon. Let's go this and this. Uh, I think we need to go this to get some stuff. Going fast makes me feel alive. My heart breaks in hyperdrive. Do you think I could win only if I lose? I'm letting destiny choose. And destiny chose to mill my entire fucking deck. Okay, so here's what we do. We make fucking Barone. Barone says hello. Activate Barone. Let's pop the Mirror Jade. Oh, they just saved it. Well, now we got a negate. So we activate this. We banish the Veiler and the Junk Speeder from the graveyard. We summon out this. Jet Synchron. Discarding the Cyber Synchron. Now that we've got eight and one, we can make Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. That's a secret that'll help us later. Then finally, we can Libromancer first appearance and <laughs> ritual summon this using the Seravis because they don't target anyway. And we can search out the fields or the, the trap. So we've now got three counter, we've got three Omni negates and a, um, and a spell trap negate. Is this until the end of the turn? Yeah. Okay. Hell of a turn. I'm sure they can probably get over this, but maybe not. I don't know exactly. Uh, yeah, okay. So they're going over that. They're crashing with the Barone. I can't negate that because of damage step. God damn it. But we've got the Cyber Synchron which will protect the monster in my extra monster zone, which is why I put it there and why I put it in the graveyard. Unfortunately, we're, we're pretty much fucked aside from that. Uh, we can go into battle. Let's just run over the kit. Activate this effect. When we deal damage, we can summon a tuner. Let's summon this in defense mode. This will let us get the fucking, uh, Starlight Road. <laughs> Ironically, now that I'm thinking about it, chat, if we had searched the goddamn Starlight Road, that would have said we would have been able to negate the Mirror Jade. We've got one negate and a prayer. Ash. <laughs> Take that, coward. God damn it. Yeah, we probably just lose. What's in their grave? Yeah. Can they brand? They can't seem to brand it in red. All right. 
Seravis. A comedy joke, one might say. Uh, let's just go in. I think we might just walk with this off the back of Red Hot Dragon Archfiend. They've got, ma all they've got is Max C. Is that them surrendering? <laughs> oh no, they're trying to draw off of the battle phase effect. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't need those. I'm not doing anything. Did they run out? Are they out of fusions? What was that effect again? When a spell trap or monster that includes the effect special summoning monsters, return one fusion you control or two in your grave. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Do not summon! <laughs> yeah, people. Uh, you've just found yourself up against the most deadly opponent in Yu-Gi-Oh! Someone who knows how to read the cards. Branded in red, eh? They don't have any other fusion material, so they just summon Jester. Okay. Or they just add it to their hand. 32. And we don't activate the effect to summon. We just normal summon Libromancer Fire. And that's enough damage to get in. Who said that the Libromancers didn't help this? Oh. Well, fuck. Oh, but they sent a trap. So I can 100% negate the Forbidden Droplet. Now it's GG! Get out of here! You're no longer wanted! Libromancer fire attack the game! <laughs> oh, I wish that, that that wasn't like to prevent us from going into plat 5 again. It would be nice if our victories were uh... <laughs> significant if they did stuff but at least at least we got a victory we'll take it where we can what if i win i gain a rank how did this happen and we get to go first where are my glasses i got i can't be seen without my glasses we need these for the rank up chat let's go going in we can't possibly brick we bricked last time so it wouldn't let us happen again Oh, yes, yes, with the ripe oil. Um, oh, but, but we opened with the Jet Synchron, fuck. Uh, so this is dead. This has to resolve. All right, hey. This doesn't get us anywhere, does it? Because we don't have any other rituals. Okay, so we add this. Then we activate the Geek Boy. We summon the Geek Boy. We get another field spell. Uh, we normal summon Jet Synchron. We make Herald of the Arclight using these two. Now that that's in the graveyard, we can Synchro Overtake to summon it back. Or we could have discarded the field spell, but this lets us have more. Special summon Jet Synchron? Why, yes. Yes, I think I will. This allows us to make the junk speeder. There we go. And we can chain block the effect. Not that it matters much. And it doesn't matter! Our opponent surrenders! They said, this is stupid, I give up. And they left. Synchro Mancers allow us to progress into plat three. Finally, after four days, we earn the gems and make our way into the higher tiers of play. Oh! All right, so here we are, dawn of the fifth stream. Stream number five out of six. And things just got a lot more complicated. Things are maybe a little easier, maybe a little harder. And that's because we've reached the halfway point and it's the anniversary. It's the, the anniversary campaign, which means they just added a whole bunch of stuff. We've got sprites in here, which uh, are gonna shake up the meta, but we've also got stuff like Psychic End Punisher that might help our deck and Power Tool Dragon, which is a, a level nine that might work. I don't know. They've got the new structure deck, Vortex of Magic. We're going to be buying this because it has Illusion of Chaos. 
But it also, but it doesn't have uh, Magician's Souls, which is what you search off of that. So I'm gonna have to buy more stuff. Um, they've also got special packs going on, anniversary packs, first anniversary bundles. I get free packs of this. Um, so before we jump into things, let's just buy a whole bunch of shit. Let's just go on a spending spree. Why not? We've got it. Uh, why, might as well record what it was like if you weren't here for the anniversary event. They give you a thing where you get like these UR tickets. And they're complicated how they work, but we'll just show it off. Basically, they've got six secret packs. They shuffle it up, and you're gonna get one of them. And I'm, of course, going to pick the bottom left for reasons that, that are obvious to some. We'll try that. And it's the Red Eyes pack. So we get one free Red Eyes pack, which, you know, need enough. Who wouldn't want a Red Eyes pack? Well, we got Red Eyes Black Flare Dragon. That'll be cool if we ever do play Red Eyes. And then we get a special UR pack that has a royal rare card. And I believe uh, we get the royal rare from the pack we opened. So it's a royal rare red eyes. I could be mistaken. Let's find out. Slice it open. Show me what we got. Yep, it's a royal rare red eyes black dragon, which uh, we cannot break down. <laughs> Lord knows I would want to, but you know. We, we've got it. If we Again, if we ever play Red Eyes, if they ever let uh, Dragoon back into this game, uh, which they honestly probably could at this point. I mean, why not? Um, oh, do I get... No, I've only got one. So there's one. They've also done a thing where right now, um, if you open this, they've replaced the regular Eldritch with the sexy Eldritch who's like leaning back and like, oh, hello there. Didn't see you come in. And they've replaced the uh, the Nightmare Unicorn with the one that has, what's her name on it? And so if you open this set, if you just happen to pull a Unicorn or an Eldlich, you will get the alt art, but only for like the month they're doing this event. After this, completely gone. And I am not gonna be opening these. I do not care about alt arts, but they give you one free pack of each, so we might as well open them, you know. See what we got. Nothing? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> it's just a regular secret pack. But you know, it's nice that they give free packs. I like a free pack from time to time. I already have two Nightmare Unicorns, so getting the third one will be interesting. Uh, could be an alt art one though. They're in the right pack. Oh, well, we got a, an Ibli. I heard this is going to be really good in the uh, the upcoming Cash Tira format. And we got a Mech Knight of the Morning Star. That'll be good if we ever, you know, play Mech Knights. So thanks, Konami. I appreciate the free cards. Now, the other thing I'm highly considering is the anniversary bundle. Because even though I don't care about aesthetics, I know that chat does. Chad is going to want to see this golden field and this cool deck box and the Dark Magician on there. And if nothing else, you do get 30 Master Packs for 3,000 gems. So it's a, you're essentially buying the Master Packs and then you get everything else free. And because I have 4,500, we can buy this and still have enough for three of the, uh, <laughs> three of the structure deck. So I think we're going to go ahead and do that, you know? I don't think we're going to get anything good out of the Master Packs. I mean, they contain literally everything. Everything. So there's a chance we get some UR staples, but for the most part This is just gonna be if you come down to the streams you get to watch free bonus pack openings But I'll show it off if I if I get anything of interest drum roll, please oh. 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 <laughs> Blue Eyes Alternative. I think I already have three of those. So, uh... Yep! We opened we opened 30 packs, so we didn't get we didn't get anything good. We did get our field spell and some ancient memory stuff or whatever. We got some um We got some stuff we could break down. I already even had a Nash Knight. I could break down that, and I had one of these too. So even if you wanted to count this as a staple, break that down, break that down, break down the shiny one of these. I mean, we got some some ultra rare and super rare points, so I guess that's all right, but yeah, opening master packs, probably not worth it. Probably not. <laughs> 
All right, and to round out the anniversary spending spree, we're gonna buy three of the structure deck, which as Chad has pointed out, does indeed have magician souls in here. So this is actually a pretty good investment. Considering you're getting three of these and three of these for 1500 gems, de definitely worth it. These are both staples in a whole bunch of different decks, very useful all over the place. And some of these other ones might be useful. I mean, if you ever wanna play a dark magician deck, they've pretty much got the whole core here. Might be fun for that new event. So, I mean, there's not really much to say. I'm purchasing three of them. The only real thing is that uh, we're gonna go ahead and bump up the coin cost. We could finally get rid of that 0.5 after spending three and say that we have 19,000 gems on this. I still haven't looked and seen if this is the most expensive yet, but I'm sure it will be because we probably have to open some of these sprite cards too. I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see. Let's, let's go into the tank. I'll see what I can come up with for another build. All right, so after looking things over, we decided to go back to pure Libromancer, which uh, I've renamed to the Libro Agenda because it's been five days and I haven't made nearly enough liberal jokes to throw in here. So we've got the Libro Agenda. It's pretty much all pure Libromancers. And really the only big difference now is that we have Illusion of Chaos. And you might think it's weird that we're only running one, but this is a level seven ritual, which means we can get it off Preparations of Rites. We can get it off of Diviner of Herald. You really only need the one. Basically all you're going to do is use it to search Magician Souls. And then Magician Souls, what it's going to do basically is if we have an extra copy of prep rights that we're not using, if we've done our combo and they haven't played into triple tactics, we have this, or probably more importantly, if we have the field spell. Because usually what's going to happen next turn, right, is we're gonna go through that same exact combo of like, summon Geek Boy, get the field spell, summon Fire, get a thing, and then set up everything. So we usually end with a field spell that we're gonna replace next turn anyway. This allows us to send that off for an extra draw, while putting an additional monster on the field. It's going to allow us to be able to make the uh, the IP Mascarena line more likely. At least that that's the hope. We'll see how it do how it works. If not, we can try slicing this into the uh, the synchro build. I, I'm still not quite sure about that. I mean, it got us into to tier three. It felt like things were a little janky, but we'll see, we'll see. We'll try this out and then if not, we'll try the other one. And then if both of those don't work, we can try adding some sprites in here because we do have, we have a single level two monster and sometimes that's enough. And this is why Seravis is the save us. Save us, the Ancient and Ascended. Get negated, Effect Veiler. Give me that field spell. Before the end of the main phase? What if I said no? You weren't allowed to attack directly. <laughs> you can get back your Widow Anchor if you give me a card. Oh. Oh, I'm still on the Synchro variant. I forgot to change decks. That explains a little bit. I was like, I could have swore we had Agent in here, but that's fine. They've got a single card, and I believe the fact that we top deck this means we just do everything. Unless they've got exactly like a um, an Ash for this. Is last card Ash? Special summon the Jet Synchron? Sure. What are they waiting on? What could they activate there? Valor again? Lancia? Yeah, we know they have Valor. Let's see if they stop this. It is the Valor. Ah, okay. Well, I'm glad we baited it out then, chat. We're a master baiter here. This would have been a much better target to use for that. Yo, what up? No, no, no. Not in my house. Fire, ba da ba, I command you to burn. Do da do, going for the fire. Do da do, hit for the big old chunky 5600. Synchromancer racking up another win by accident. Cause I forgot to swap the decks. So, you know, there's, there's that, but we, we did some stuff. <laughs> All right, this is pretty great. This is, I think, like optimal. Um, in this case, 
Because we've got the agent that we can't use, I am actually going to go for the Illusion of Chaos line. We're an Illusion of Chaos, and then we can activate this. We can reveal it. We can add the Magician Souls from our deck to our hand. And then we can put the agent... Or do we put this back into the deck? Because in order to summon this... We need to send one spellcaster, and we don't have any other spellcasters. Okay, so we put this back in the deck. Gotcha. So it just replaces itself for the magician souls while being a ritual that we can potentially use and search. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, let's go ahead and emergency teleport. Then we're going to make Barone de Floor with these two. Then we're going to activate the magician souls. Send that to the graveyard. Special summon. Then we're going to use the Magician Souls. We're going to send off this. And uh, considering they're a go second deck, I don't think the call by is going to be very useful. So we're just going to send that off and draw two. If they had a hand trap, they would have already used it. And that's good because if without the two, we wouldn't have gotten the droplet, which is absolutely useful during their turn. Um, so then we're going to use the two of these to make the IP. And as you can see, using the Magician Souls, we've slightly increased our ceiling. We now have Omni Negate, Omni Negate, Nightmare Unicorn Spin, Targeting Protection, plus Forbidden Droplet. We've got a lot of stuff. Unless they have like Lava Golem, I think we're gonna be good. Which granted, there we go second deck. We could easily get Lava golem We'll just have to wait and see. I think we want to negate that. One extender down. Because otherwise they're going to get the one that lets them bounce stuff, and we don't want that. Yeah, we're going to stop that as well. Card advantage, thy name is Libro. And yeah, if I had Appalooza, I could absolutely make a three material app right here, but I don't. I am playing Underworld Goddess, so if they make another link, I could link off with theirs. One, two, three, four, five, and make a fucking uh, Underworld Goddess. Yeah, I think that's too good to pass up on. Let's go ahead and make Underworld Goddess using this. This. Oh, I can't use that as to- oh, I gotta use the Barone. Okay. This is actually hilarious now that I think about it. This is only affected by a cards that target, and Seravis can negate targeting effects. So this plus Seravis is just invincible, unstoppable, immutable. Attack for 28, I mean 56. 56 plus 3,000? Get the hell out of here, Sword Soul! You thought you could go second against me? You don't know what I'm cooking. I'm the Master Chef. Oh, that's fine. That's like a, a zero on card advantage. Unless it's fucking Thunder Dragons. Yeah, I don't think I can allow them to do that. Let's go ahead and negate that. Because if they get access to the level, the, the Wyver Burster and stuff, three or more cards are in the same column. Uh, no. No, get out of there. So they can get Rocket Tracer and really get off to the races with some shenanigans. I just need to figure out when the best time to activate IP is. And whether or not I want to go for Unico- Not Rocket Tracer? Do you already have it in hand? They already had it in hand. Yeah, okay, so if I try to Unicorn now, they just pop whatever. Uh, yeah, I gotta wait for them to make something and hope they don't make something that can shut me down. Oh? Not using the effect. Yeah, so I definitely want to go for uh, the Underworld Goddess here, right? Because then I can negate the Boot Sector launch from summoning a rocket from the graveyard. Yeah, so we can stop that. Because it, it's an and if you do. So if they don't get this, then they don't get everything else. So we can use this, 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 and this. They don't get that, and then if they activate the boot sector, they can't summon it out of the graveyard because this can negate anything 
Yeah, when your opponent activates an effect that summons monsters from the graveyard, you can quick effect negate that activation. And again, we've got the... Oh yeah, sure. We'll just negate everything on the field. Just in case. And again, we've got this double lock of like, Underworld can't be effective unless it targets, but Cerevis negates targeting. Oh, they had one in the hand. I thought they were going to try to go for the defense one. Oh, I don't have more monsters than them anyway. The real question is like, uh, so next turn I can, I still have the resources to just go absolutely ham on them. We're talking honey glazed. We're talking topped with all sorts of gravy on a nice brioche bun. The question really is like, can they, they make enough here to stop me? Oh, well, I mean, I can negate that one. And then just, oh, Romulus, fuck. I thought from there it was just make spheres. They don't have a pitch for the ravine though, right? Ha ha! Take that, Dragon Link. You shan't be linking around anymore while I'm around. Runic. Target one spell trap. Uh, well, I've got to stop that. Ironically here, the triple lash is kind of good. I got one monster on the field. Oh no, special summon one runic. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We have three ash so we can negate the field spell anytime they try to activate it. So I think that may actually be what we need. It's just like, you know, we could, we could stop three field spell activations and if we could stop them drawing for three times in a row, we've just won the game. There's also the fact that they have to resolve a uh, runic spell in the first place. And I ain't gonna make that easy, chat. It is Sprite! Yeah, I have to stop that. Get the fuck out of here. I can't let them have a level two or a search. Target one special summoned monster. Ah, you see, but I have Cerevis, the ancient and ascended. And they had Sprite starter. Guess what? Royal Ash, baby! Can't be negated! Get that shit out of my face! Sprite? Nah! Runic? Nah! You're all being crushed in the brief grinder! I've got all the negates. Discount negate warehouse. Ha 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 ha! Take that! That's what you get when you let your heart sin. You get defeated, and I rise above it all. Rise like so much delicious bread into platinum too, baby. Ha cha 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 cha! What do you say about that, critter? Well said, buddy. Well said. Ah, the Maximum C. Yep, I have lost the Max C minigame, which means I probably just lose. Ghost Ogre. That's unfortunate. Chat, they're doing it! They're doing something dumb while Herald of the Arclight is on the field! They just banish their Rodent Toted for no reason! Uh, sure. We'll just activate this. I assume with all the cards they drew, they have to have drawn an ash or something. Oh no, they're using the sprite on it. Oh hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Excuse me? Excuse me, you what? What in the Sam Hill? This man just summoned Dark Beckoning Beast. Sacred Sprite. Well, I mean, uh, we're probably still lost because they've got a non-targeting banish, they've got a monster effect negate, they've got smashers, or we already said smashers, and then now they're not locked so they could just turn these two into like a two-mat Appaloosa or something. Let's try to activate the Geek Boy. Let's get geeky, boys! Activate. We can't use this trap at the moment probably never will be able to. So let's just send it off and draw two. <laughs> oh! 
What if I linked away your stuff? What if I negated your whole field? Sprite carrot is turned off. Can't negate no more a bump bump. We gotta have like a solemn judgment or something for this. They got something to stop this. If I don't, I think we win. It's the Smashers! <laughs> Although now I'm realizing I don't have a monster on the field, so I can't get the double attack. Oh, this can make two attacks on monsters regardless. Draw a card? Yes, I still get to draw a card. Oh, perfect. Wait, this works! Okay, now I can use the first appearance. I can summon the, the Doom Broker using the Ben 10. That'll get it onto the field. We activate the Ben 10 effect, grab ourselves a Dawn of the Herald, and then we can activate this using the Doom Broker on the field and the fire in order to get the fire burst. We're bursting, baby. Let's go, attack. 2800? Nah, I'm going even higher. Can we get much higher? So high, yo ho ho. 3,000 double battle damage. All right. I didn't know they had an attack increaser, chat. And I can only gain 200. Why does this have to be the worst? We almost beat them. They just happen to have like the best shit. Cat shark, cat shark. Alone in the world is a little cat shark. And they ran out of time or surrendered or something. Time limit win. We take those. We take those. Hell yeah. It wasn't the best version of Sprite, but it was still Sprite and they max seed and we still won because they were too slow at this new deck. to make Avramax. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh no, how are we gonna deal with, oh, that. That's how we're gonna deal with it. Forbidden Droplet, you're negated. And now, uh, I have to destroy this though. Avramax still protected anyway. I, I knew that. Who said I didn't? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. They surrendered. We did it, Critter. <laughs> we made it. We got ourselves into plat one and we beat Sprite yet again, even if it was only by a weird surrender. And I honestly have no idea why this is doing so much better now that the game has improved. I guess we just really have a pretty good sprite matchup. Either that or Illusion of Chaos makes all the difference, even when I fuck it up. Chaos Magician putting in a shit ton of work. Being able to add, but consistently add the one more disruption is just great. It also helps that we have a good sprite matchup. Uh, yeah, I gotta stop that. Let's just maxi here. Oh, they didn't take the IP. How about no? Yeah, we gotta do this now. They seem to be unaware of how well I can OTK, especially after maxi. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I have any targets left for this. Yeah, so they max C here. Then I cross out Designator. Then they negate, but that's their only negate. Yeah. Yeah, I just get out of here. And with that, chat, we're finally above the 50% win rate. I don't think we've lost against Sprite yet. Granted, it's new. Granted, people don't seem to understand what they're doing, but uh, holy fuck. We're just beating the hell out of Sprite. 
Okay, very small, minute change. Almost feel bad coming back just to do this. Uh, because we are still winning. The deck doesn't need to be changed much. Except we want to add Appaloosa in there. There's so many times off of IP Masquerada where we would be able to go into this and it might be better. And we've never used more than one Entis in a duel. So I go went ahead and took the second one out, put in one Appaloosa. Version 1.1. Let's go ahead back into it. We're always normal summoning this. There's nothing else we can do. Max C. We just have to do it. Sadly, they can dodge out of that because the Sprite Elf can bring back any level 2 monster. Oh, but they're using this instead. Okay, so we've baited out the carrot. And then they're just going to bring the orange back. So that means we get to resolve this. The question is, what do we do with it? Um, I guess it really depends on if they let this resolve. Because we're going to send the, the arc light. If they negate the arc light, then we, we kind of have to uh, draw and hope we get into something. If they allow it to go through, then we take the... All right! All right, all right, all right, all right! That's what I like to see, okay. And now that we have everything we need, we're using this to take the IP. Ding. So now they they have the carrot negate. We do this, if it gets negated, then we've still got this into the field spell, into the ritual, into the summon, into the draw. If they don't, then we can make Barone to floor. All right, so they're negating that. But it doesn't destroy because they only sent off a level 2 monster, right? Okay, that gives us some material still. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, we could link now. Can you kill this turn? I believe I can. Uh, we'll just negate everything. Oh, Smashers is any card. Oh, okay. There's a chance, as always, they can mess up, and if we make it back... If we make it back to our turn, you know, we have a Libromancer and a, uh, Ritual. And we did it! They didn't draw enough! We've got it! And with that victory, ladies and gentlemen, in the second to final hour, we rank up into Diamond 5! We will not go quietly into the night! We will not be pushed back down into gold once more. This 51% win rate against mostly Sprite has allowed us to devour the bear, absorb its essence, become the fury of nature itself. Let's do it. Woo! <laughs>《Here We Are》Dawn of the Final Day. We have one more stream to see how far we can get. And we've already made it into Diamond. So you know what? Considering how much of a struggle the front half of this episode was, I already consider this a success. However, it might just be possible, considering we have a pretty good matchup, considering it's the end of the month, that we can sprint our way to the top in the last four hours. Unlikely, but we're gonna see how far we can get. And to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look back at the Synchromancer variant of the deck. Again, I'm not sure if this is necessarily better. You're, you're essentially trading out stuff like Forbidden Droplet in order to play a bunch of tuners that you, you summon, uh, which, which uh, I mean, it gives it more of a ceiling, but it makes it less consistent. We'll have to see how that works now that we've got the Illusion of Chaos and the Magician's Souls to sort of make things more consistent. So I think we're gonna try that one out, and then if that doesn't work, we'll go back to the Libro agenda that, that got us into Diamond in the first place. I was playing this a little bit over the weekend, and uh, it, it was just kind of going back and forth again. As you can see, our, our win rate is in the positive, but not by much. We're still very close to that 51% win rate. So we'll try that out, and I don't really have a whole lot of other ideas but we'll, we'll try, we'll see how it works. And I just realized we've been on the, uh, <laughs> the previous version of the deck the whole time. I said we were gonna go to Synchro and then I forgot to change it over. But since it's winning and we only have one more win to get it to Diamond 5, I guess we'll just keep on this until it loses a couple times. 
Spiral Resort. But um bump ba bump. As long as I keep this on the field, they can't do their combos, right? And that's the only thing that negates and destroys this. Okay, so that I'll negate. I'm just gonna make Appalooza. Wait, they went to the battle phase anyway? I don't think they wanted to do that, right? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna say no. Go ahead, discard the last card. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say no to that one. I don't think they can get Master Plan to hit the grave at this point. Oh, I thought Super Agent just let them draw a card. Okay. Unless they're playing triple tactics. Forbidden Droplet, they don't have it! <laughs> we'll activate this. See if that baits out. Yep, the last one. We'll normal summon the Herald. Activate Herald. Send that. Activate that. We pop the master plan. Yeah, even though they'll get an effect. Oh, no, they won't. Take out this. Take out this. Okay, so we cleared the board. They can probably go again. It's just a question of whether or not they're out of resources. Okay, I think I might have this, chat. Activate first appearance. Oh, did you target one of my monsters? You foolish fool! Seravis, the ancient and ascended, says nay to your targeting nonsense! You cannot target my monsters, sir! They are too powerful! And now, using my most powerful of monsters, I shall send the Geek Boy and the Doom Broker in order to summon Libromancer Fireburst! Libromancer Fireburst deals double damage when it attacks! and can banish a ritual from the graveyard in order to boost its attack by 200. Take 6,000, you fool, and end your pathetic game. <laughs> Take that, Spiral. I've had enough of your shit. For now, we will see if the bear is beyond compare. This would be a decent, wow. Wow. Whoa, this is awful. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna make um, F.A. Dawn Dragster, and we're gonna hope that a Spell Trap Negate and uh, Max C and Forbidden Droplet are enough to get us through this game. <laughs> okay, so 600, six, 12, 18, I get four activates. Let's do this first. The problem is, how do I threaten this? I want, I was hoping that would bait out the Chimera, and then I could use this on the Chimera, which is what I really need to do. No, actually, if we're gonna do this, we need to make the Chimera as not useful as possible. I just realized that they're playing two Masquerade. I'm fucking doomed. So here's Baron de Floor. Let's pop the back row. Titanoclad. Well, that's probably the best thing I could have hoped for. We can attack over this. Dealing battle damage allows us to shuffle this back into the deck. We can attack over this. That clears the entire board. And now we have two negates to deal with whatever they could possibly... We have, they have two, they're gonna draw one card and they have that they can summon out of the graveyard. So we have one negate for everything they could possibly do, which is probably good. Uh, yeah, let's negate that. 
Ah, uh, that was very dumb of me. Go off, king. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, here's what we do. We bring back this herald. We activate the effect. Uh, sure, we'll do this for the... <laughs> Cause we can! I refuse! So we negate the ash, we use the herald, we send the Entis. The Entis pops their dragon. And now they're out of things. Good game. GG. No re. Oh, and Barry just uh, come back up here, Barry. I know he's a sh he's afraid. He's a shy boy. He's like, are there fireworks gonna go off? No, it's okay, buddy. It's all fine. He doesn't like the fireworks very much. No need to extend this any farther than it needs to be. All right, we did it! Okay, that wasn't a firework. It's okay, buddy. Thanks, Blueberry. I appreciate your help. Hey, go back, hang out with Critter. It took a long time, but we did it. We didn't just break into Diamond Chat. We broke through the Diamond Ceiling on to Diamond 4. Will we get higher? Will we go farther? You're not going back to Synchromancers? Not until these start... <laughs> That's awful! Oh, uh, wait, no, I can still do something with this. It's not good, but I could do it. Oh no, not this again. Would you imagine, just, just like, make, make Black Rose blow self up, surrender. I'm in danger! What if lasagna was anime? I mean, I guess. Why not? <laughs> that's, that's a lot. Wow. You discarded three cards to get one monster on the field. That's the most minus I've ever seen. Yeah, I'll ash that. All right. I see we've both bricked. It's a game of disappearing bricks then, is it? Uh, no. No, I'm not gonna let you do that one either. Yeah, guess what, scrub? Bootin. <laughs> In attack mode. For maximum disrespect. Me? I ain't playing around no, no, uh... I ain't playing around no mech knight. Attend me, squire. Yes, sir. Man has spent 3,000 life points to accomplish nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not ever letting you draw with decode. You are going to spend half your life points trying and failing to draw a single card. Uh, oh, okay, he drew an extender. Oh, they're going, they're, they're going for Excesco. Uh, all right. I mean, to be fair, if I don't draw into a Libromancer, I'm fucking dead. So, there's that. But I have like 12 Libromancers in deck. Come on, Libromancer. Yes! We got one! Now we just gotta hope that last card in their hand isn't fucking Ash. Because if they have the last Ash, I'm going to be in so much danger. <laughs> we did it! It was a knockdown drag out fight! Putin was in attack mode, many cards were wasted, but somehow we pulled it out, baby, and I am confused as to hell. What what was that in their hand? I must know. I have to know. It had to have been retaliating snow? Um, token collector, DD Crow. I guess it had to have been DD Crow, right? We didn't do anything. Wow, this is a pile. No wonder they bricked. <laughs> All right, so we haven't deranked or anything, but we haven't been doing great against the the current matchups. I feel like we need to increase our consistency, increase our ceiling a little bit more, and I don't think that the synchro version will do it. At least not the regular synchro version. 
Chat has turned me on to Libro Punk, which is an interesting little engine. Now that we've got Deer Note, which got added in the same pack as Illusion of Chaos, we can basically do a combo that allows us to search Geek Boy uh, while also putting a Psychic End Punisher on the field, which is just absolutely like unstoppable in this format. So I think I'm gonna try this. But of course that means we need to open up a couple more packs. I, I probably could uh, just do everything, but I want to turn that 19,000 gems into a solid 220,000. So let's just go ahead and open one, one set of the latest pack. We've got the gems, we'll try it out, and then we'll, we'll build this and see how this works. Sprite of Miracles. All right, so we don't, we might, we might end up needing the Exo Sisters. We might need the Neo stuff. We're probably gonna end up opening this anyway. But really, like, if we can get one Deer Note, if we can get one Psychic End Punisher, uh, that's all we need, is just one one of either of those and we're good. So let's go ahead and try it. 1,000 gems into the tank. Oh, baby, look at all those glowies. Granted, only one of them is feeling the pride. This is usually an ultra rare though, so I'm thinking at least two ultra rares. Let's see if we can get one that we want out of it. No, no, we didn't get what we wanted. But that's fine, we got an elf. We were thinking about putting that in there anyway. So let's do that and we'll just craft the rest. All right, so after doing some testing on the solo mode and after messing around with the ratios, here's what we came up with. Libro Punk Mark I. We're already late in the episode. I'm not gonna go super deep into it. The main thing is, basically, now we have a line that lets us make Psychic End Punisher. And this is filling in the gap that we previously had with the, the Libromancer Fire Burst that like did a whole bunch of damage. This is like a big unaffected boss monster that can get to like 7,000 attack and just keep getting bigger that we can easily make while searching out Geek Boy. Hopefully you'll see the combo. Although we're super late, I have like an hour left to play. So maybe this was a bad idea to change things up with the last hour, but between that and then we've got Chaos Ruler, we've got uh, Dragon Drive, which also can search Snow Rabbit. We just got a bunch of stuff. Well, I'll show it off. We'll see how it works. Let's lead with the Ziamen, which we can summon if we feel like it. Ziamen activate its effect. Let's go ahead and grab the Foxy Toon. Yeah, Foxy Toon. The question is, what do we discard? I think it's the Ash on this one. And that'll summon the Deer Note from the deck. Level five plus level three. We're gonna use these two to go into Punk Session Drag and Drive. Or Jam and Drag and Drive. Punk Jam Drag and Drive. Drag and Drop Delete, whatever. We're gonna activate this, which will search uh, Ghost Ogre. We'll activate this, which will summon the Ziamen back out of the graveyard. And we could activate the Ziamen to chain block, but I don't think it's necessary. This gets us the, yeah, because we've already got access to all the uh, Libromancer stuff. And then eight plus this level three tuner we just summoned is 11. So we can get the Psychic End Punisher. And putting it in attack doesn't even matter because it's unaffected by everything as long as our life points are lower. And the punks kind of make sure our life points are lower. And so then we activate this. Because this guy, again, un just unaffected. Just unaffected by everything, why not? Um, and yeah, that's probably where I would surrender to, because what we do from there, right? Activate the field spell, search Doom Broker, um, tribute the Cerevis to summon the Doom Broker, get a uh, negate on the field in the form of a trap, then we summon the, the Magician's Souls, we draw a card by sending the field spell off, and then we make uh, IP Mascarena. So we end on basically the, the full combo from last time, right? Like the, uh, the, the Libromancer trap with setup for next turn, with the uh, Barone de Floor, with the IP that can go into anything. Plus we're also going to have a Ghost Ogre, a Towers, and whatever we happen to draw. This game has become absurd. Just absolutely absurd. Uh, well, this, this is, you know, this is what can happen when you play a deck that has like two fucking garnets in it and a thing that you search. <laughs> Going second and we got 
Previous versions of this deck only had one special summon, or one normal summon, right? And now we've got two. Most decks can play two normal summons, no big deal. But you occasionally run into situations like this where all you open with is your two normal summons and you have to kind of sit there and be like, well, which one do I go for? I think in this case, because like, you know, this could search me a ritual, but that doesn't do anything without the Libromancer half of the deck. Probably go for Ziaman, but they can probably shut that down with damn near anything. So uh, I think I'm doomed. Probably doomed, but I'll show this anyway, just to show the, uh, the flaws of this build. Uh, yeah, I think we just go next on this one. Okay, Effect Veiler. No, you're not getting an extender. What do you tribute off? Oh. I guess that's what you get. It's fine. They essentially wasted, like, two things to get rid of. Yeah. Take control. Yeah, I have to intervention this. Can't let them steal my dudes. Then they carrot, and I destroy their carrot. That leaves them with two co- Oh, they don't carrot. They do not carrot all. That was my only spell trap. I don't know why they wouldn't go for that. I could negate that and leave them with three, or I could just let them banish it, and then... And then they have two, and then I can stop the last one with the... Yeah. Go ahead. Check it out. I had a second effect veiler the whole time. Get wrecked, spriting tins! <laughs> that wasn't even my full combo! Alright. I'm at I'm almost at the end of my energy. We we've been here about six hours. I'm very tired, and I don't think we're gonna get much farther. But I wanted to make one more try at this deck. We've been bricking on a lot of hand traps, and uh we haven't been getting like our rituals and our Libros as much. So I went ahead, I put in three preparations of rights, I took out the Veiler. I took out all but one of the Ghost Ogre because we could just search it during our combo. Maybe this will make things better, maybe not. Maybe we won't even get a duel in, but I, I want to try it. Let's try it. Last, last version. Either way, it's past midnight here. I don't think I'm going to be able to get into Diamond 3. But we certainly tried. Libromancer certainly did more than I expected it to with all the different versions, all the different types. It ended up being quite interesting, quite nuanced in what you could do with it. And there's always a chance that we get more Libromancer support in the future. You know, I've been looking at the art and everything, making thumbnails for stuff for the VOD channel. Which, there's a VOD channel, by the way, link in the description. And like, on this one, there's these two ogres that are tied up. The ogres are also on the, um... The field spell, you could see them fighting there. So there's still some villains. They could add the villains into here, maybe make some evil fiendish guys or something. I don't know. Uh, either way, I think I think I'm gonna call it call it for now. Let's let's hop on over to the end screen. And with that, ladies and non-ladies, I think we've reached the end of our episode. In the end, I was able to make it to Diamond 4 with Libromancers, which uh it's not as high as I would have liked, but a decent finish considering how badly this episode started. Overall, I think it's clear that this deck does have the potential for high tier play, but it really suffers from the current Master Duel ban list. Seemingly unrelated hits like Ben 10 to 1 and E Telly to 2 somehow both hurt this deck's consistency. And while nearly every archetype is hindered by Max C to some extent, Libromancers in particular have a really hard time dealing with it. I mean, literally every monster in the deck is a special summon. And you usually need to do at least three summons to get one negate on the field. So you're always losing the exchange with Max C. Decks like Branded and Mathmech thrive on Master Duel in particular, because they have alternative lines of play, an off-ramp, if you will. When Max C comes down, they can pivot to a combo line that still lets them get a couple disruptions on the field, while only summoning one or two times in the process. Like many rogue decks, though, Libromancers can't do that. You're either building a board and giving your opponent 10 cards in the process, or you're passing on nothing and getting OTK'd. 
So anytime Maxi resolves, you, you just lose the game straight up. It's unfortunate because I think Libromancer is a really fun grind deck. Like, yeah, it can do huge combos, as you saw, but their real power is their repeatability. Their small but effective toolbox of rituals that can also make links and synchros. Regardless, I had a lot of fun playing this deck, even when it wasn't doing that well. And I hope you had fun watching it, too. Maybe someday we can bring Libromancers back onto the show once Konami bans Max C. Anyway, now that it's the end of the episode, let's take a moment to be super geeky ourselves and look over the statistics for February 2023. I ended up playing 175 duels with Libromancer over the course of seven dueling sessions. We won 89 of those duels and lost 86, which gives this deck a win rate of just barely 51%. We went through 12 frickin' builds during that time, but the best was probably the Libro Agenda deck that I have behind me, which contains just 3 common cards, 13 super rares, and a whopping 39 ultra rare cards. I spent 20,000 gems on this month's deck, which would cost about $260 if you bought them all at the store at the standard price. Finally, Buying all those gems wouldn't have been possible without 404 awesome patrons who help support this channel. 32 of those patrons donated $25 or more this month, so I'd like to take a moment to thank them personally. Their names are Davon Crushin, Carlos Jackson, Cat Monarch, Dude Blade X, Shadow1317, Austin Glover, Chris W. E Lance, Ya Boy Slurp, Montry, Barbarians Are Us, Choppy Rice, Chris Kessler, Default Titan 97, Dancing Joker, Emperor Lelouch, Frosty Punch, Inge Magnus, Jeff M, Jeremy Gorneau, JJ Squirtle, Long Live the Queen, Matt, MBT Yu Gi Oh! Nathan, Naw Dog, The Razor, Quintingent, Sanguine Strawberry, Tenga Toppin' Bob Ross, TJ Minty, Torg the Kobold, Tristan Marlowe, and Viscount Billy Esquire. If you'd like to join them, there's a Patreon link down in the description. Just $1 gets you on my Discord, $25 gets your name in the credits, and for $10, you can get a special role that allows you to vote on what deck I play next. Speaking of which, next time on Ladder Climb, we're heading into the labyrinth, baby. Get your traps ready, remember to pay your maids, and don't forget your David Bowie references, because it's going to be a meme-filled ride. If you want to see me attempt this in real time, you can follow me over at twitch.tv slash hardleggaming. Again, link in the description. I stream all my duels there. I've also got a VOD channel. You can watch the streams after the fact. It's called Raw Hardleg. Should also be down in the doobly-doo. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and until next time, good luck and have fun.